Hey, what's up, guys? This is Johnny Bean. Exclusively Van Halen is the Van Halen Show on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, page, well, Johnny Bean pages. So if you like Van Halen, this is the place you want to be. We're live on Facebook. We're basically everywhere on Facebook, exclusively Van Halen group. We're live on Twitch. We're on Spotify as a podcast. We're on X. We're everywhere. X Mage Point S in the chat will give you all my uh, social medias. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's uh, let's talk some Van Halen. This is Johnny Bean TV. Hey, this is Michael Anthony right here, and you are watching exclusively Van Halen on the Johnny Bean TV. Keep it there. Woo! See ya. What's up, dudes? Johnny Bean, exclusively Van Hello, Halen, everybody. the Van Halen show on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Look at this. We got Ned. Usually, there's a guitar sitting there, but you don't want to. You don't want to move a, a sleeping cat. Not right? I there think there's is. a saying about that. Yeah. <laughs> So hey, let's say hello to some people. You guys know. You guys know Ron. Ron Gunner. Hello, everybody. Good to be back. What's the latest, hey. man? Uh. Uh. Well. Uh, <laughs> uh, buddy of mine calls me up today and says, "Hey, you home?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "All right, I'm gonna swap, stop. My, my birthday's not for another couple weeks." But he's like, "I got your gift, and I want to uh, stop by and drop it off." Said, okay. I was surprised he gave me a guitar. <laughs> oh, no way. It's a hollow body Telecaster style made in Vietnam. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, I'll show it here. Nice. Maybe later on. Uh, spent the week weekend with my, my parents. Uh, my dad is stable. He's mm -hmm. never going to get better, but he's stable. Mm -hmm. So that's as good as that is. And Tone Chaser came today. Thank you, Steve. Oh, there you go. He told me it's, I, I, I don't call him Steven. It's Steve to me. Or to him. Steve. <laughs> yeah. How many pages is that thing? That thing looks like a tome. Yeah. It is. I think it's like 500. 500, 500 nice. 580. There you go. 580 pages. What page you on, Johnny? What what that in the back? Yeah. All right. I read the, usually I read the backs of the books, and so I just know, there you you know go. the cliff notes. Mr. Mike, fifty one fifty, dude, it's Hello. been a while. I was you were talking about this the other day. I think it's been close to, if not more than ten years, that we did that discussion about eight to ten at the earliest about fair warning <laughs> and then i don't know if it's been I, that I've long popped on yeah i popped on for your little you know uh, guitar world or guitar guitar center um you know midday things but that's about it you you've made an, you've made appearances on the channel here here and there over the years but i think the last time you were on one of these shows where we talked van halen was i think we talked fair warning right and that was probably I just remember the apartment I was in, and that was my first apartment in Concord some eight to ten years ago. Oh, okay. Maybe it was eight years ago. Where, yeah. I don't think it was. I mean, that how long have you been doing this show? Uh going on eight years, nine years. Okay, so maybe not ten. Okay. That's no. good. That makes me feel a little better. Yeah. <laughs> a couple years younger. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. 
Well, hey, you guys, you guys, uh, we've got some uh, Van Halen news for you guys. Uh, Dave Lee Roth uh, released a, uh, a cover version of the song Jump. We'll, we'll, uh, well, actually, he didn't sing it. Somebody else sang it, but he, uh, he pushed it out today. We'll be talking about that. And then you guys know, was it Sunday? Sunday was, Saturday. was Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday Sunday three. was St. Patty's Day. Huh? No, Sunday it was Sunday. Was St. Patty's. Was Which was, was the 17th. 17th. Oh, I, I know what you're getting at. I was talking was about 17th. somebody's birthday, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saturday was Wolfgang's birthday. Happy birthday, Wolfgang. Uh, we did a, a quick show uh, celebrating here on the channel. And then Sunday was the anniversary of Van Halen 3. Which, dude, it, it'd be like this now. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> are, we, are we doing sign language now? Yeah. 1998 was the year I graduated high school. And that was... 25 years old. ago last year. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah so I... Uh, <laughs> it's getting up there. Yeah. But everybody is celebrating this anniversary every year, right? Yeah. Yeah, For this you, you got to do it. So, <laughs> so we'll be talking about some Van Halen 3 today, you guys. So, hey, smash that subscribe. We're looking to get to 12K YouTube subscribers. I think we're... I don't even know. We're very close. Uh, we're like 40 away, actually. We're 40 subscribers away from the big 12K. Wow. You were just 400 away a couple weeks ago. I know. I know. We're growing. We're growing, Re you guys. Remind me when we're back in the green room to talk to you about that. Okay, cool. Well, he's got some bots he can send your way. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Other channels do that. I don't do that. No, not no. this one, baby. Not this. Not this channel. Um, so yeah. So let's uh, let's say hello. Actually, let's let's say hello to the top tier of channel members Heck yeah, here. Top tier on Johnny Bean YouTube channel. Channel memberships a great way you, you can help support the channel and support these shows. The top tier are the executive producers. They are currently Sherman Callahan, Michael B. Live, CC, Nova 9, Michael Smith, Music Therapy, Laz, Arhabs, Warlag, Patty Dill, Fairfield Guitar Co., that's Lewis, Majestic P, B, and J Cat, Guitar Man 45, and Janice Lala, the intern. Janice. Janice. Somebody wake up, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we have, have channel Janice. membership. She's we have channel membership. Everything. And don't wake up, Ned. He's sleeping. You know, he was awake all night. But if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, Super Chats uh, is a way you can help support and help us Johnny, run these shows. Johnny, what do Super shows. Chats do? Super Chats changes the color of these lights right here. Not these ones, but these ones right here. We got This is called the Guitar Noir. We have all kinds of memorabilia here, guitars. We got future giveaways. By the way, speaking of that... Uh, We'll give something away tonight. I'm not sure what. We, have, we didn't really plan that out. Um, but hang out towards the end of the show, and we'll do a giveaway for like a Van Halen magazine or, or something, something cool. But if you stick with us, if you subscribe to the channel, we actually have, uh, we have a, a guitar giveaway at 20K. So you'll want to subscribe. And then further down the line, we have another guitar giveaway. Uh-oh. Man, people keep telling me not to do that one. They're like, Johnny, don't do it. Don't do it. But it's like, what else? But if I win it, you'll know where it is at all times. I'll know. If you I'll win even it, let I'll, you come visit it. I know. I'll know exactly where to go and, and, <laughs> and play it. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> if I yeah. win it, it'll look different. <laughs> uh-huh. It'll be pink. Well, it's, no, it's, it won't. It's, <laughs> did it want... <laughs> Did it at one time have 5150 along the bottom and it doesn't now? It did. I, I put some decals on there years ago. Now it's just a five, huh? I took them off. I left part of a five on there. I, I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> it makes it different. Yeah. You know, I like stuff being being a little, little. you know, I don't want everything exactly, exactly the same. But let's say hello to some people who are watching us. We got about 30 people here. You guys are awesome. Thank you again, you guys, for tuning Say hi in. in the chat, everybody. Say hi. Brian Davies, I'll never win it as Johnny would never the postage. That's true. <laughs> US only for that. 
So Brian Davies moved to the U.S. and and you can uh, you can win that. Janice is here, channel there member. Is. There you yeah. are. Van Halen 2020 is here on Twitch. If I win it, I want the neck to stay exactly the same as it is now. There you go. Meaning, it's only going uh, to change if I win it. So. <laughs> yeah. When he's watching over on Twitch, is that right? Yeah, we're live on Twitch. We're live on Facebook, exclusively Van Halen Group on Facebook. Uh, EVH Gear fans live on Facebook. Frost Swirls is here. Look at that. He would love the Ernie Ball. Can yeah. you imagine that with a swirl paint job? Sure. Ooh, a frosty. Now, here's swirl. here's a challenge for you, Frosty. Just just swirl the back, leave the front, the uh, the maple with the curly. Oh wow, that'd be cool. That would be different. Chris, what's up, man? Yeah, and we're, and we're what's still up? Here's my friend Celeste. Hey, can I get a quick shout out? Yeah, of course. Celeste without the T. This is from her. She oh, got me this cool, cool cup. Without Ooh. the tea? So what, what yeah. are you drinking in there then? You mean? No, Apple her juice. name is without the tea. <laughs> it's just Celeste. water, but it's delicious and always cold. Oh. Thanks, Very Celeste. Good. Very good. Welcome, Celeste. Make sure you subscribe yeah, I, to the channel. <laughs> and your friends. <laughs> I, have to ask, I have to ask Frost Swirls, did you do the bumblebee with the uh, black and yellow stripes into the fading yellow swirl could you do that yet because i am really waiting to see that one mm -hmm. oh yeah he <laughs> promises not to swirl the music man just a backup if he, if he wins maybe a facade uh you know a fake one that you can take off yeah we're glad to have you here there you go thank you thank you celeste welcome She's coming from Alabama, so we're getting international here. Oh, yes. Just kidding. Inter interstate. Yeah. By the way, I'm Santa Cruz, California. Bay Area, uh, Nor NorCal. Uh, let's see. I'm going to say Mid-Eastern <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> Woo! Cool. Coming from all around. <laughs> there we go. Peggy's from Here's Bay Alabama. Alabama. That's right. I think, Peggy, I've heard that you're in Alabama. You guys might be down the road. By the way, Alabama was a great group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it's Van Halen, but I'm sure there's a connection there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure there is. I did were, see were, that. Were, were they in the video with Hank and Young Country when they said, I know Van Halen or whatever they said? Hmm. They both have vowels in their band names. There's that. Been. I know Van Halen played Alabama there on tour go. because I've had bootlegs of that. But wait, you mean played I, in the state of Alabama or play covered their songs in the state? OK, in the state. When Although I did played see, Alabama, I did see that the lead singer of, of Alabama, he recently retired from from touring. Randy, Owen. that's a long time. I, I well, saw their, that their, their cousin, Jeff, the lead guitar player and piano player and banjo player and violin player, fiddle. Sorry, he died. That was last year, or two years ago. So they hmm. really haven't done that much since he passed, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Hell, Michigan. Yeah. Hell ain't a bad place to be. Uncle Raymond, Michigan. How do you do it? The mitten. The mitten. <laughs> Uncle Raymond. Here we Ray, go. Uncle Raymond, I know it's a sad day for you today, same as it is for me. And if Luz was here, he'd know what I'm talking about, too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, you, we can talk. We can talk about that out of the gate. Okay. As Uncle Raymond would know, and if Lewis was here, he would know. Today is the forty-second anniversary, if you want to call it an anniversary. Uh, to me, it's a, a sad day that Randy Rhodes died in the unnecessary plane crash today. So this weekend, I went to an old record store in Columbus, Ohio. I picked this up. Diary of a Madman. Uh, some of Randy's best guitar works on here. And it what make what what really gets me mad about this, I'll show it real quick. This was recorded at the uh, farm studio, and it was recorded with Ozzy, Randy, 
Bob Daisley and Lee Kersley. But yet on the sleeve inside here, it's showing Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge, who are not on this album. Hmm. Now, How'd that happen? I, well, I do know that a few years ago, uh, uh, Sharon had the uh, songs remixed, and she took Bob and Lee off the recordings the original recordings and had them redone by I don't even know who the who the other guys were. And the one time I can say that I was very surprised, Ozzy, when he found out about it, uh, he demanded that the originals, Bob and Lee, be put back on and re released. And uh she Oh wow she, she did what Ozzy wanted. So I don't know if this was made when she had those, those two guys replaced, which is what I'm thinking happened because it's not not Tommy and Rudy on this album whatsoever. It's Bob Bob Daisley and Lee Kersley. So, hmm. But anyhow, I just wanted to... <clears throat> peace out, Randy man. Yeah how how old was Randy when he died? Twenty just turned twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah, he turned twenty. That guy had a long December. career ahead of him. Well, that's what, you know, you look at Blizzard of Oz and that. He wrote that when he was 22, 23. That's crazy. So. He's a kid. Yeah. Yeah, just a kid. Mm -hmm. So to that, I. Uh, there he and, is. And I don't know if you know, Mr. Mike, but there's a Sandoval back here on the wall. Beautiful. So, yeah, Randy, you know, you know it was Ace Freely, Eddie, Randy. George Lynch, Diamond. Yeah. Those are my guitar heroes. The Power Five, huh? <laughs> I dig it. I don't know uh, if I have any bands I like more than any others. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to say. Is that setup always there? Or did you make that for I that? added a few things to it for today just to try to compete with your guitar more because I've got some... I've got I added the sleeping cat. Strap. Yeah, and I don't even have that. <laughs> yeah, my pets are all uh, insects around this place. So um, <laughs> uh, I have a crummy old, I think I bought this Strat over here, a Strat imitation Strat for about 50 bucks off of a friend 25 mm -hmm. years ago, 20 years ago. And this uh, Ibanez acoustic, I'm babysitting for a friend who lives in um, out of out of the country. So mm -hmm. uh, he sent it to me and I, it's a nicer acoustic than I've ever had. So those are hanging out on the wall. And I recently, I think I texted you, uh, Johnny, when I found this poster. Huh? Oh, yeah. And the I, Eddie. The Eddie. The Eddie. I just yep. thought that was fun. Like, I don't have, I have movie posters hanging in my place, some nerdy ones. And they're <laughs> quote unquote framed. But this one I just threw up like it was in a college dorm um, over the amplifier here. And, you know, uh, can I ask you about that? Yeah. Okay. I know where you got that because you told me. Right. right? I was in, um, oh, where, where was it? I, I went up to, I was in Campbell, California mm. last week. I went up to Guitar Showcase, which by the way, you guys, this Friday, we do a show called Talking Guitars. I'll be showing you footage from, uh, from the, the guitar shop tours that, that I took uh, the past week. Anyway, I was in Campbell, California, and they have a, a record shop there. This, well, we can we can say Rasputin's. Yeah, they, they have Rasputin's in Campbell, and I didn't look through their posters, but I saw like they had them open, and I saw some other posters in that same style. So I'm of assuming other artists, not Eddie. Correct. Yeah, like okay. there might have been like a Hendrix. Artist. There might have yeah. been a Hendrix, and it was in the same design as that. So there's an artist who signed the bottom of it. I can't see it right now, but I don't know who they are. But I think, as you mentioned, it's a photograph from the 2004 reunion tour with Sammy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just kind of digitized it, did some funky stuff to it. But I thought it just looked fun and had the energy, the the vibe of a crazy Van Halen solo. So I thought I'd put it up there for inspiration. Um, mm -hmm. And then I've got his son Wolfgang's second album up there that's also uh, autographed. I got one that comes with an autographed insert in there. By the way, and, you guys, 
And let me also mention, when Laz and I went and saw Mammoth in uh, Monterey, Mr. Oh, you, Mike was there too. And what I won he this, I didn't us. win it. I caught this little thing right there. What's that? Hmm. Hmm. W? Yeah, he, he was throwing <laughs> picks off, off the uh, stage, or one of the guitar players was, actually. I think I got that from one of the other rhythm guitar guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually... The guy in front, I was looking all around on the floor for it. The guy right behind me tapped me on the shoulder and handed it to me. He found it and gave wow. it to me because he knew I was looking all over for it. And he was at like, hey, I we already got one earlier. So he got one for me. Was it the show that we were at in Monterey? Oh, yeah. That's the only one I've seen of, of oh, Wolfie. So. No way. Yeah, you don't remember cool. that? I, I, I remember. Yeah, I remember you looking around because we, we stood next to each other during the show. Remember oh, yeah, that? Remember the fight that broke out? The, the opening band? Yes. And did I tell you I ran into that band again later? Yeah. Not at that thing. I went to a <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age show. The yep. band was called she Heavy Blazer, like a Chevy Blazer, but they're heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, those guys were really recognizable. And I saw them standing outside of the Bill Graham Civic. And I went, hey, didn't I just see you guys open for Wolfie Van Halen? And they were like, whoa, yeah, like we have a fan. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what happened with that? Your drummer almost jumped into the crowd and fought someone. <laughs> and they went, yeah, he did. <laughs> so that wasn't staged. No, they were no. like, he kind of does stuff like that sometimes. <laughs> He's a big dude too. So Mosh I'm pit. glad it didn't, didn't get into anything serious, but there were some finger pointing and shouting going on that was oh exciting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you would think, uh, I don't know. I mean, getting an Very opportunity like that, opening up, you know, a show like that, I don't know if they'd want to want to trash the place. But, hey, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Hey, look at those blue lights. Hi, Lisa. Look at that. Thank you. Also, Great Laz said hi. Laz. Laz. What's up, man? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Laz was Laz. at the show, Mam the mammoth show that we were at. I'm sure no, nothing no. cool happened after that show. I just took off for the three hour drive home. But... <laughs> yeah. No, man. No. I'll, t I'll tell you no. guys, since, since Mike is here, before the show, when we saw Mammoth in, in uh, Monterey, California, when, when was this? What month was this? October, I want to say. So it was a few months back. Or maybe yeah, August, earlier, August, yeah. was, August was Andy Summers. It was before that. It was before it was before that one. Oh, okay. Same venue. So it was September or September or August. Laz would know. Laz remembers all that. So anyway, so we, we go we meet up down in Monterey, California at the uh the Golden State Theater. Really nice place. Yeah. And I show up and I hear the band uh sound checking for just from outside the venue. So I'm I'm hanging out at this guitar shop next door. And that that's that's a, a tip. If any of you guys go to the Monterey, go down there to see a show, you can hang out at the guitar shop right next door and you can hear sound check and everything because the, the, the buildings are almost connected. They're right next to each other. Yeah, they're old, right? Kind of old buildings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so anyway, uh, the band is, is sound checking and then I'm outside walking around and all of a sudden here comes the rest of the band just walking down the street. So I so we end up just chatting for a bit. We we actually went and got some Chipotle. Myself, <laughs> uh, the bass player Ronnie, uh, the, the guitar player, uh, the drummer, and then um, and then we leave there. And then we go to the show, right? Right. After I ran into show, you a little earlier, and we went into the show together. Yeah. We went into the show, and then after afterwards, you left, and Laz and I we're walking to this this little. Uh, uh, restaurant and there's the band just hanging out behind the venue just sitting there so we go up to them we're like hey great show and everything they're like yeah yeah you know we go and we have a bite to eat as we're eating the band comes walking in they come walking into the place and uncle pat patrick bertinelli comes walk walking in and i go up to him I'm like hey I'm, I'm johnny bean he knew me he knew me he remember like, oh, yeah the, he's like the cap yeah so he he hands me one of those picks the pick that you have yeah yeah he gives me one and then i end up hanging out with them for the next like hour or so 
just sitting by this fireplace, just just BSing, talking about mutual friends and, and whatever, you know? And then after I leave, we leave I'm driving home because, you know, I have like a 40 minute drive to, to here. Yeah, mine was about two, two and a half to three hours. Yours was a while. And I'm texting you saying, hey, man, why'd you take off, dude? We just, we just hung out with the group. And you're we like out before and after because oh. <laughs> we actually you're... did walk around for about 10 minutes <laughs> trying to figure out what to do and i went you know i don't know it's a long drive i'm gonna head out and we said yeah. goodbye and i figured that was the end of it nope that was just the beginning of the after party so no. learn my lesson hang around a little longer that's a great venue and that thing oh, is yeah. that restaurant is the only place that's open when a show is over oh right um, around the corner right around the corner from yeah. there and i mean the last show i went to there andy summers you know i got to hang out with them because you know i know him or whatever so that was a little different but um yeah next time we go to a show there just hang out for a little bit because you never know you might meet the you might have to get a hotel the, room down there or something the yeah, hang out a little late yeah yeah where and else are they shows gonna go? there they have great yeah. shows and there. steve Vai was there recently that's right he, he was coming right after you know i mean all, all kinds of cool stuff. Well, and Wolfie put on a hell of a show. I mean, they, real musicians all the way around. Yeah, and we were right up in front, weren't we? We were literally front row. If it wasn't for there like, was like one person in front, in front of, of me, us, that was about it. We were front row right in front of Wolfgang. And it, when you say front row, it was all standing room. We were all just pushing up against the stage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was great. Cool. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Well, hey, let's do this. Um, First of all, let, let's let's talk about this. I probably should have done this. Let's see how much of this I can do before my laptop crashes. Don't crash but, the laptop. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's an older it's an older laptop, so it, it seems to seems to happen. But hey, Van Hill News Desk is uh, is reporting Dave Lee Roth gets up for a new cover of Jump. So let let us know in the chat anybody who's heard this yet. But uh, David Lee Roth's uh, social medias uh, pushed out uh, a, a cover of Jump by an artist named Alex Melton. I think that's how you pronounce, pronounce his name. M-A-L-T-O-N. Yep. And it's described as an acoustic alt-pop indie rock cover. And uh, I'm assuming this is like, that's like the original version of it. Uh Roth uh, put out uh, a version with a bunch of footage of him with his dog, say, walking around New York City. Very cool, very cool footage. Let us know in the chat what you guys thought of the of the of the cover if you've heard it yet. Um, it's, I mean, from what what I think, it's it's basically like, I would say it's like today's version of of the song. I mean, it really sounds like something. Well, I mean, obviously, it was recorded recently, I guess. But, but it, it yeah, sounds it was like, like alt acoustic. Uh, pop again, like they described it, alternative pop kind of vibe. Yeah, if that yeah. was who wrote it today, that's what it would sound like. Yeah, but it's. Just, I mean, it's the same song, but it just you know sounds you know a little different. Um, let us know what you guys think in the chat. Well, Mr. Mike, did you hear it? Yeah, you heard. You heard. Like, I heard it. I heard a moment a of it bit. through your phone, through the microphone, through <laughs> the internet, into my AirPods, like that. Yeah. So yeah. I got the gist of it. Uh, I'll have to give it a nice, uh, loud, you know, play it loud in the car or something, kind of thing, to get the full texture of it. But uh, mm -hmm. gotta say, I'm still sticking with the original, mm -hmm. personal. If I'm listening mm -hmm. to Jump, mm -hmm. which I gotta say. I After concur. all these years of being a Van Halen fan, it's not the one I'm diving into straight away. Mm -hmm. I will say, yeah, Ron, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> He's a man of few words, folks. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do right there. Uh huh. Yeah, not the video though. You want to thumbs yeah. up the video? Yeah, video is fine. It's just the yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, which yeah. video? You you like the one of Dave or the one of? Mr. Melton there. Yeah. He means this. Oh, this, yeah. <laughs> Our video. This that we're watching right now. That that's no, that's just no. It's just completely wrong. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, can well, B9 uh, with his uh, oldest granddaughter or their, I can't tell, he or she, uh, get him to cover uh, Jump. She's kicking ass in, in uh, high school band with the flute. Let's let's hear the the Jump solo on flute. Let's get that That'd going. That'd be cool. That'd be <laughs> cool. Tall, so. Have you guys seen the, the, the electric violinist that plays? Yes. Yeah. Plays the like girl? like I don't know if I did. Yeah. Plays like the Hopper teacher solo and all yeah. that on violin. Oh, yeah, you'll have to forward that one to me. It's on TikTok. That. It's on TikTok. So you better watch it before TikTok goes away. It's also on Facebook Reels. Well, it's the same thing. Yeah. TikTok yeah. videos and Facebook Reels. It, it, it's it's all the same thing. It's just uh, all the away. same content makes the round. It's all the same content. Yeah, it just starts on one, gets to another one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I will say about about Alex Melton's cover of this. Um, I th I think it sounds cool. I I like it because it, it's it's more original to probably the. I'll admit I haven't heard his original music yet, but I would say it probably sounds more like the way he covered the song, and I I I give props to that man. Instead Anybody of doing their playing own playing it exactly like whatever. You can just listen to the actual song if you want to make it sound too much like the actual one. You know. Yeah, reinterpretation uh, takes some skill. So, kudos oh, yeah. to anybody that does that. Yeah. Well, that that's what that's what Eddie always said about, uh, like when they did Diver Down. Yeah. You know, he's like, "Hey, we can just write. It takes takes the same amount of time to write a song than it does to make a cover sound, you know, original." And though so. that album, I think, even though Eddie, I mean, we're not to do a whole deep dive on Diver Down, but the covers on that got, you know, kind of criticized. Oh, it's lazy. And it's like, I don't know, man, those covers are great. I personally love ev almost everything on that album. I, even the Big Bad Bill is Sweet William now, where Jan Van Halen is playing clarinet and somebody's on the washboard. I don't know who that was. That's that's another example of making something sound totally, totally, you know, unique. And if you were to play that, dude, if you were to play, that's a great example to anybody that's becoming a Van Halen fan now or that's recently a fan that maybe doesn't, they don't have all the albums. You know, they would have 84. You know, they right. would have, they, everybody knows Jump. Play that for somebody and say that's Van Halen. They'd be like, what? There's no right. way. No Including... Way the very first time a third Van Halen was on the record mm -hmm. with Eddie and Alex's dad playing the clarinet solo. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I and, remember you know, they, they did a whole intro build up to pretty woman. That was yeah. insane. And then that cover was great. And I, I love dancing in the street, their version more than I think the original. So <laughs> I think mm -hmm. a lot of it, a lot, a lot of people did. Yeah. And it still mm -hmm. gets played on the radio a lot. It was a big radio hit. Yep. But Eddie, mm -hmm. Eddie was like, eh, but it wasn't ours. So he didn't have the love for it. But it's like, hey, we still love what you're doing, Eddie. Well, actually, that the music to that was supposed to be an original. Right. Ted Templeman said, hey, use that for this. <clears throat> and that he that pushed was... for it. Yeah. Yeah. So Eddie probably had bigger plans for it, but even as a cover that got forced out of him, it still rocks. And the guitar solo on that is amazing and everything. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff. All of it. All right. Uh, well, hey, let's do it. Let's let's uh, let's talk some Van Halen three. You guys, uh, the anniversary Van three. Twenty six years on. Uh, what was it? Sunday on Sunday, last Sunday. Yeah. The seventeenth, just this past Sunday. Yeah. How should how should we do this? Well, well let's Ron, go. Ron's let's heard it Ron. the most recently. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I I in all these years, twenty six years, I've never listened to that album, other than the one video they did where Eddie's wearing the funky hat, and I don't know what the hell was going that on. That was there. the Without You music video. Yeah. That's the only song I ever heard off of it. <clears throat> so I listened to it today for the very first time. And I listened to it again. To, uh, right in a row. Because you loved it so much. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was working on guitars and I figured, why not listen to Eddie? Um, there you go. 
And to quote uh, Charlton Heston in True Lies, there's just nothing blowing up my skirt with that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. In what movie? True Lies. Charlton Heston was in True Lies? Char- Charlton Heston, he's the he's a, in charge of the Omega Corporate, the Omega. Man, do I need to get back and rewatch that old movie? <laughs> we are going back to the nineties. Yeah, all uh, right. Yeah, but no, um, I, I, it just did not sound again. Being Roth era guy too, so you know that's another thing. It just took me a while to listen to Sammy, and then I was forced to hear the one. <laughs> and I always call it the one. Every time we were setting up to play. Oh, that's the one? Yeah. Every time we were setting up to play, the sound man would put that on. So it was it was actually surprising because to me it didn't sound anything like Van Halen. Not at all. It sounded like Eddie was a guest guitar player on somebody else's music. Um. Yeah, and they often said, you know, you change one member of the band, you're changing the whole dynamic. Yep. And I think this is a perfect example of that, and especially switching out not just the singer, but the producer. Uh, they had never worked with this producer before, and hmm, surprisingly never did again. So I think that had a lot to do with it. And uh, Eddie and Alex kind of uh, engineered it themselves. Am I right, Johnny? Did they kind of take it upon themselves to be the the soundboard mixers and engineers themselves? Maybe with I a think, studio guy. I that think they, they all on? did. I, they did have they did have engineers uh, working on the album, but they I think they basically. I mean, maybe Van they mixed Halen, it themselves. Van Halen 3 is basically Edward Van Halen's solo record. That's really what it is. That's really what it is. Like, if, if Gary Sharon wasn't on it, maybe Eddie would have, would, have, would have sang all the songs, you know, or it would have been instrumental, or, or who knows. But it really is a, a, a solo album, you know, Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, I mean, it just didn't... It, didn't hit for you. No, no, not at all. And and and, and I like I was saying in the green room beforehand, Johnny, you were away at the time. Um, the comment with Eddie saying, you know, I don't want to release anything until it's right. That almost that was coming back to me like, then why did you release this? <laughs> it's just I mean, it just I don't know. Maybe I was expecting too much. I guess I don't know. Uh, we're getting I, some I, interesting. I, 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 I was I wasn't expecting a Roth era because obviously. You know, the that was gone. Day, yeah. You know. But, and I can understand why, how Gary could sing Sammy because a few times on it, he sound, you know, they sound almost alike. But it's, just, I mean, it's such a departure even from the the Van Hagar era. It, I just, I don't know. It, I just, it was, it was the second coming of the second coming. It was a, a new twist to the whole band. Um, and it did change everything. So to dive a little bit for those who may not know, but I think everybody here probably knows, uh, David Lee Roth left the band slash got fired circa early 85 or so. Is that right? And very quickly they looked around and said, we want this Sammy guy in the, or Ted Templeman, I think was the one who introduced them. Um, and Sammy did a stint of 11, was it 11 years in the band? Uh, the, the, before Sammy and Edward had the same auto mechanic. That's right. That's how they audio personally and got together. I actually used to be Facebook friends with him. Uh Oh, what'd you do? Yeah. Well, he, up. He, no, he, he passed away. That'll do it. He yeah. passed away. Um, <laughs> but that's too bad. Yeah. That yeah. guy, we owe a lot to that guy. Um, but then things fell apart with Sammy. Uh, there was, trouble on the balance tour there was trouble during the making of the one song they did off of an album which was the twister soundtrack uh song and even around the recording of the video and the writing of that song they weren't even in the same room working together on that and pretty soon it was just over and the next thing we heard as fans is hey they're getting that guy from that band extreme what's his name gary something I, I was 16 at the time. I didn't really know. I was just getting into Van Halen on the previous album. Oh, Uh-oh. we lost Ron. 
Hi, Ron. <laughs> He's had enough of this talk about this album. <laughs> um, and so I was just getting into Van Halen on the Balance album. And this was the first mm-hmm. new material I was there awaiting. You know what I mean? So it was thrilling for me. And then it started to hit. And I was like, uh, I don't know what to, what to think of this. And I'm still working it out. Well, actually, if, if you back up, mm-hmm. remember, we thought Roth was coming back first. Right. That's right. 96. They put out the best of volume one just mm-hmm. after the whole MTV debacle um, where they showed up to offer a mm-hmm. best male single song on the MTV Video Music Awards yeah. with Roth for the first time in 12, 13, 14 years, something like that. Well, uh, yeah, 80, 84 to 90, 96. Right, 12 years. Yeah, yeah. 12 years. So, but actually, they had already rehearsed, they had already released the single. Uh, oh, had they for me? Wise, me magic. wise magic had already been out because when they were on MTV presenting the award to Beck, that's when Roth was dancing around the background and and was, was trying to weird. steal the show. It was kind of was kind of strange, but but again, I mean, look at the what the audience thought. Like, oh, oh man, they were Van, ha- on their Van Halen's back. It yeah. was amazing. You know, it was a huge thing. And we were hoping that that meant, OK, they're they're thinking about reuniting. And, you know, they did a couple tracks and we came to find out not too much later that there was some backstage drama that kind of maybe nipped it in the bud before it could actually develop into something big. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, then I think the Gary stuff came along. I think it was already kind of like, nah, we're just doing the greatest hits. Roth is going to sing on those. And then after that we're going to do something else. I think they were already planning that. Be- yeah, behind, there's behind a the there's scene. a lot of different uh, takes on how that went. So it's it's kind of yeah. up in the air as far as what the truth is. Um, yeah. But yeah, but, I think they would maybe even already been talking to Gary by then, potentially. Yeah, I, I think they're already talking to Mitch Malloy. Actually. Oh, Mitch they're, Malloy, that's right. He did record talk- some demos. Yeah, they were talking to him and then Gary Sharon uh, as well. And then, because I remember watching that on MTV live, or is it is it live out here in California? If it, if it takes, well, yeah, I mean, show with a delay. in California, and then it, it's live in New York. I don't oh, know they shot it, that in New York. Yeah, it airs it out here three hours later usually, right? No, I think. Well, maybe. Yeah, it was like five o'clock their time would have been like two o'clock our time. So, so I don't know. I can't remember. I just out here. I don't know if it's live months. really, but I, I remember think I the, videotaped it and everything. Yeah, I remember watching that, the MTV thing, and seeing that and being like, wow, that that's cool. Although I'll tell you guys, I am a, a huge Van Hagar fan. So when Sammy left, oh, it I, I, I was like, oh, no, that, that's not that's not good. Well, hey, get Roth back. You know, I, I do love the, the Roth era. But then so I remember seeing that. And then right after that, MTV News says Gary Sharon is, is set to be the new Van Halen you know, singer. Yeah, for those of you who uh, were born and raised in the internet era, it used to be Kurt Loder bringing us this information. <laughs> yeah, uh, MTV News was was our what blabbermouth or VHND, uh, those kind of websites where we get all this stuff now. Or Twitter was just MTV News, and you had to wait to hear that little do 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 MTV News. <laughs> yeah, and then you go, and it was like, oh, something's happening. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I like I said, I was uh, probably the summer between my junior and senior years when all that was happening uh, with Gary getting in the band and hearing rumbling. So I had some time to go, oh, I better check out this extreme band that he used to be a part of. Mm-hmm. And I, how did I do that, boys and girls? Back in the old days of the 20th century, I went to the local record store and bought compact discs. Um, maybe a no, no. This was pre Napster and anything, anything like that. So <laughs> yeah, I collected all four of their their albums, <laughs> and uh, I, I was like, okay, this guy's different. But what he was doing in Extreme was fascinating. Um, some of it was very hair metal pop rock. Some of it mm-hmm. was. Their more, most recent album before that one, before he joined Van Halen, was more a little hitting on the grunge side of things. So they had 
various sounds and everything, but he sounded great behind the microphone. And I said, this could be really something good. What happened to, what was your expectations for that when you heard about Gary being in the band and imagining what it might be? I mean, truthfully, I didn't own any, any of their albums at the time. Mm. Uh, of course, I knew the, the more than words, the ballad. I mean, everybody knew that. You hear that. Everybody knows that one all the time. Dare I? So. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh god! Oh no! Oh no! Yeah, that was that was one of those things. If you're going to, if you're a young budding guitar player, and you're going to college parties, you got to learn to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to learn to play more than words from their their second album, right? Yeah. So they were known as, as that. Most people yeah. would know them as that band, the acoustic band. They were and nothing like, a one like hit that. Wonder. Yeah. Can it's almost go? like a one hit wonder, but but not. They had all this other stuff going on. So so when I first heard Sharon was joining, I remember thinking, "Oh, okay." That's cool. I mean, the band is, is going on, and I mean, to me, it's all about Eddie Van Halen, anyway. Exactly. So anything he, anything he does, to me, is fine. And because I've heard everything that's commercially out there, I've heard, like stuff that I'm, I guarantee stuff you've never heard. I've I've heard, you know. You got the uh, the wild. What is it? The wildlife. Wildlife. Sound, yep. Soundtrack. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there's more than that too. There's there's all kinds yeah. of stuff. So. So when when Sharon joined and if oh okay Ron's got no audio <laughs> Ron you're just gonna have to mime it all my man yeah what it's charades <laughs> this is a podcast too they can't even see <laughs> just jump out and jump back in there we go Kurt Loader is seventy eight robot says oh my god. Now he's yeah. perpetually 40. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Let's, first of all, let's go back to, let's go back to 1995 or 96. Okay. I'm assuming we were at some of the same Van Halen shows that year. Just one. Just one. I only went to, it was my very first Van Halen show ever. It was October 14th, 1995. I know it's because it was my sister's birthday and it happened to come right after somebody else's birthday. Hmm. And it was, yeah, um, at the Shoreline Amphitheater <laughs> in Mountain View, California. Yeah, yeah. I was there. I was on the lawn. I was there. I had seats. I was there, man. What was the opening song? Do you know that one? Of that show? Yeah. The opening song? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it depends on the, on the leg. I saw hey, them. The second leg. I saw them three times that tour. This that was the last time I saw them. It was either uh, crap. I just remember the lights doing like before I could see anyone on the stage. All this I know what it was. It was right now. That's right. Okay. So all the little piano notes, but da 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 da, and and they're synced with all these little lights just flashing individually yeah. around the around the backdrop of the stage. That. I, I have that cemented in my memory. Yeah. 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 So, dude, I was there too. You guys don't know this. Mr. Mike and I, we've actually been to several Van Halen concerts, like the same ones or actually together. We saw them in 2015. Yep. Same show. We met up and said, hey. I think we ran into each other at one of the 2012 ones at Shoreline, I think. Yes. Just by the merch stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I different, think you had seats. I was up on the lawn or something like that. Different ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. I, I mentioned the, the, the balance tour in 95 because I remember walking out of that show with the tour book, balance tour book. Yes. And the, the very back of it, it says visit Van Halen online. I'm like, huh? what's this? The internet? What's the internet? internet? Got a website. Yeah. What's, what's the internet? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> so I remember seeing I remember that, that, that early the, website. The I remember seeing that in the back of the tour book. Yeah, that was a Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. They didn't have their own site at the time. Warner Brothers hosted their site. You would have to go to the right. Warner Brothers website, and there was a Van Halen section there. So when Gary joined, I think it was like 
maybe like a year or so where you could go to Van Halen's website and get all sorts of updates on the recording and the making of what would become Van Halen 3. Oh, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had like photos. They released uh, the, the, the list of songs, photos, uh, even some video, slight little videos from the, from the studio. Quick, uh, were they, I'm trying to remember the, the video player that, yeah. It they, were this they were this size, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're shooting this in 1080p. They were in like one or two P. It was a very small, grainy video. Those videos, yeah. those videos. And what I was going to say earlier was we, uh, we uh, Ron was talking about the, and by the way, Ron's having technical issues. He's trying to get back in here. The Without You music video was really the only video, I think, that really, that people really saw from this album. Yeah. Yeah. There was there another were, one, too. There were a couple other ones. Right. There was one for uh, Fire in the Hole. Because it was... Because it, it was on the Lethal Weapon three, four, four soundtrack. I wouldn't have I went and seen I, the theater if it wasn't for that. <laughs> I went and saw it in the theater and had no idea the song was in it. Oh, really? I was, I I was surprised. I yeah, I was yeah, I surprised. Think I knew. So, so uh, anyway, and then music video for that. It was cool. It reminded it was, me of the um, what's the Twister one? Uh, Humans being video, not. In, in how it looked because everyone's dressed in black and Eddie's playing his black PV Wolfgang. Yeah. Yeah. But, but in the, in the, in the, uh, fire in the hole video, they're like in the round, they're on a stage. Right. It's like a mini run around video, run around video. Where, yeah. Where they're going around and they're surrounded by, you would say like Boba Fett characters. They were guys. It, so the, the character in the opening of the movie is a, an assailant, salting people with a flamethrower and that became yeah. like the theme of that music video <laughs> yeah that was Big the theme of that guy. video mm -hmm. right so so that so, so you can see that welding masks down mm -hmm. and a big flamethrower you know with tanks on his back and stuff yeah yeah so so that was out and then also later on they released a video for the song once which uh, just you, on the you, website, as I recall, you probably never saw this. It was this size. You could only right. watch it in this size. And I want to say it was maybe directed by or, or the photographer, maybe filmed by, I want to say David Bertinelli. Oh, really? I want to say he had something to do with, with the video. Maybe it was footage yeah. that he had shot from behind it was the just scenes. In the studio. Maybe. It was mostly Eddie in the studio. It was in the studio and it was live. It was them on tour. And the thing is, the song once it oh, was a really? different it that. was a different version of the song. It was more of a pop. It was more pop. It had more keyboards keyboards in it and stuff. Sean says once is a great song and video. That is a controversial statement. I think there there's a go. lot of people who are uh, into it, and then people who hated it, hated it. David Burton. Oh, it was David. Yeah. Burton. Yeah. Yeah, so you, I think it was like featured by like AOL or something. It was one of those videos where the screen was this big. It literally. was, so, and I, I got to think it. There's a better resolution video of it somewhere in fifty one fifty or something. Somebody edited it and in a better quality than that. So, as a video guy, I do video editing. That's my yeah. Insert AOL dial up sound here. Oh my god, <laughs> you've got mail. Yeah, that's 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 how I saw that video. Yeah. So um, anyway. And Robot says the Without You video got a ton of play. I don't I don't remember it getting a ton of play compared to a lot of stuff that was going on. I mean, there was a big shift towards hip hop in the late 90s away from the rock stuff of the grunge era um, and the post grunge era. So it was up against some stiff competition there. And, but and the I stuff, definitely too. recorded it. I recorded the um, premiere of it. Oh, yeah. And the pop stuff. Britney Spears was new. NSYNC was Britney new Spears and NSYNC were the two biggest things at that point. Yeah, 98, 99, they started blowing up. And 98, deg 98 oh. degrees. <laughs> yeah, oh, and the Backstreet Boys and all that stuff. Yeah, Christina yeah. Aguilera took over. They, they changed yep. what was on the air. Um, and so, yeah, Van Halen was going downhill in, in uh, terms of what, how often they could get shown on MTV. Um, right. But I recorded well, the just rock, video. Just rock music in general. Rock music. Yeah, 
for sure. Because MTV by that point was turning into more of the reality stuff. Oh yeah, and God then v VH1 an took over like the music. Most of us had to go to VH1 to watch stuff, and really VH1 did have a lot of the cooler shows. They had what does VH1 stand for? Pop up video. Do you remember? Uh, video hits one. That's all it was, which is a weird or, or, or title. Yeah. Um, and there is no VH1 anymore, right? Hey, he's back. I, I don't for know. God knows how long. <laughs> I love Technical StreamYard. StreamYard is the greatest thing in the world. I love it. <laughs> hey. Wait. Me, wait. Say, say that again. <laughs> I love StreamYard. StreamYard is the greatest thing in the world right there. There you go. It is. All the yards. StreamYard is the one. StreamYard is awesome. Yes, yes, Johnny. <laughs> yeah, I love it, dude. You weren't, you, dude. You weren't here ten years ago when we were doing these videos. When it it was, if you think this is bad, imagine, <laughs> dude. It was impossible getting guests on these shows when we started doing these shows eight, yeah. seven, eight years ago. It was impossible because you had to have a Google account. You had to. Right, we did it on Google. Do you remember yeah. this, Mr. Mike? Yeah, yeah. When I came in before did it from this, my bedroom. Yeah in an old apartment that yeah it used to be a nightmare getting guests onto these shows so Streamyard, this is actually a cakewalk compared to how it used to be years ago <laughs> i love Streamyard. that's all i got to say <laughs> ron uh, sean wants to know google hangout better. that's right what's that sean spring says are you feeling better ron he assumed yeah. you had to take a medical a, a, not medical a personal moment no no, no, no. <laughs> I just had to reboot everything twice. Oh my gosh. Turn it. Yeah. Unplug it and plug it back in. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, that early, it's funny that early MTV or, or early two thousands, but, but pre two thousands MTV and the internet becoming a thing at the same time, Van Halen was trying to hang on for dear life. And, and they were trying to introduce a third lead singer, a third version of this band. And uh, somebody said it a little earlier um, about the live tour uh, before we go into the actual album. Uh, Johnny, you said you didn't get to see them on this tour or maybe didn't care to. I don't know. Unfortunately, <laughs> I was on tour myself that year. Oh, there you I go. Was, I was That's in a the band. I, I know I drop this name every show, but I was living <laughs> with Desmond Child. That's right. And and the thing is, let me just, I'll just get this out of the way. Van Halen 3 came out when I was living in Miami and I was in a working band, I was signed, I was touring, we were recording. I was, I was hanging out with John Bon Jovi's mother, all sorts of weird. This is Bon Jovi. Yes. All <laughs> sorts of like just Mary Lou Bon Jovi. I'm, I'm rock assuming. and roll, rock and roll, uh, at, you know, basically just oh, wow. living the dream as far as like being a, 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 a rock musician, whatever. I was doing during the time of, of Van Halen three when, when that came out. So anytime I hear the album, anytime I see it, it totally takes me back to to Miami, living at Desmond's house, working, you know, on on music, you know, whatever. So I know it, you know, music affects people differently, but it totally takes you back to, to wherever you were when it hit wherever you, you were exactly. And I mean, hit you so, like sometimes it, an old song hits you many years later. And that's what it makes you think of is whenever yes. it hits here and here. Yeah. So for me, it's a little different for me. It totally takes me back to a really bizarre time mm. uh, as a, as a working musician. But what, what I, to answer your question, I was on tour myself in Miami when they were touring ah. for, under, under the record, you know, for, for Val, Van, Van, Van Halen three. I remember they played Concord, which I'm assuming is where you got that shirt. No. <clears throat> no. Shoreline. They played Shoreline too? I didn't even know that. That's where I saw okay. them. I don't know that they played Concord on that tour. They did. They played Concord. Okay. Yeah, let me show everybody. Look on here. the back. Yeah. Well, the, well, don't take it off, but. <laughs> no, I'm just wearing. I'm just... Are the dates on the back? There's not dates, there's cities. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> just cities. And I can't be, that. Your other it left. said San Francisco. I saw it. It said San Francisco. Yeah, it says San Francisco, but I don't think they played in the city. Okay. They probably. Offer. Okay. I was unaware they played Shoreline. I know they played Concord because a friend of mine told me he was, he saw them. And then right at, when I came back to California, 
You know how back before the, the internet, really, you had to buy like VHS tapes of bootlegs? Yeah. I ordered, I bought a bootleg of Concord, California, Van Halen 3. Really? So I've seen the show. Yeah. I want to kind of see if we can find that one somewhere. I want to check that out. Yeah. Um, I made, so I went to this show. It was the day after, it was the day of my sister's birthday. Uh, we were having a big birthday thing for my dad, whose birthday was a few weeks earlier, where our gift to him was the whole family. And I mean, extended family came over to redo, help redo our backyard, which couldn't, it needed to be rototilled and like all this stuff. And they said, well, you, we can't afford to, you can't afford to have somebody, you know, come out and do it professionally. We, we're all going to pitch in and help. And it was mm -hmm. this big weekend thing. And so I left in the middle of that. I was supposed to be plowing the yard. And I said, I got to go to this Van Halen show. I was so excited. I was going with a friend of mine and we made a big banner. You know how people bring banners to the concert. Sometimes we were mm -hmm. 17 years old. It was a fun thing to do. We were in the seats. We thought we'd give it a shot. I drew caricatures and I got to find this thing. I told you, I think I've got it in storage somewhere. I still don't, I have not gone into my storage locker and dug it out. I drew caricatures of all of them. <laughs> it's a dusty and the mothballs are there, but I've got it somewhere. I got to rescue it. And I, we did caricatures of everybody in the band and it said Van Halen along the top and it said third time's a charm along the bottom, <laughs> which oh, cool. did not turn out to be true, but I was very proud of my Eddie cartoon, so I'll have to show you that one of these days. Um, nice. And we went to Shoreline. I had some seats kind of along the uh, uh, the left side as you're looking towards the stage and mm -hmm. uh, brought a buddy of mine who had never been to a Van Halen show. I'd only been to one at that point, and he wasn't a big Van Halen fan. Instantly converted. He thought that was a great show. And I tell you... That they, I'll just put it this way: they were better live than they were on the album, absolutely. And if you want a proof of that, there is a video of them in Australia mm -hmm. on this tour mm -hmm. that demonstrates how great they all looked and sounded, even if Gary was a little weird on stage, which he is even in his own band. I had never seen Extreme live, so I do remember that Australia video you're talking about that, that premiered under an MTV show show called live at the 10 spot at the 10 spot. That's at right. The 10 spot. And the show, it was edited down. Like now you can right. find like the full show out there. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was, it was cut it was, down. Um, yeah, it was in Sydney, right? Maybe. Yeah. Sydney, Australia. Yeah. They started the, the, they started the tour out there. Um, Something that that I've always I've always said was was I think they should have done a tour first with Gary. And I think Gary says that says this now. Yeah, they should have done a tour with him playing the greatest hits, playing the deep tracks, playing their original stuff and then go in, record an album. I think it would they have done each other first, right? It would have done much better. I think they could have gelled. They could have kind of um had found that camaraderie on the road gotten their vibe gotten comfortable with each other and this was also the first album eddie said eddie said that he ever was handed lyrics first mm -hmm. and wrote music around it and, and ron maybe that tells you something about the difference in how this album was made is that he he was getting poetry just written scr on scratch paper from gary just ideas and thoughts of what if we had a lyric like this? What if we had a core or a, a, a verse like this? And it was about this. And he would use that to write riffs and, you know, melodies and things like that. And then they'd apply it. Not in every case, I'm sure. There was things you were telling me were on, um, oh, the, the stop an 8H thing that Eddie played on Saturday Night Live back in 86. 87 87 turned into one of the songs many years later that ended up on van halen 3. it finally made it onto a van halen record and yeah. it evolved it's a little different but he kept tweaking it yeah. originally originally that music was a song that was a 5150 demo hagar right. you can find hagar singing on it it was called i want some action and then it went from right. that to an instrumental 
that I don't think it's officially called Stompin' 8H. That's just what people call That's it. That's what I think. people have written on YouTube videos that you find. Right, out. right. Yeah. So so it became that. And then after that... Uh, the studio where they record Saturday Night Live. Yes, 8H. Yeah. Steve Lukather released an album in 89, and he released right. a song called called Twist the Knife, which is that. Edward Edward might be playing on bass on the song or something. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, because they're buddies. So, they were buddies. So it went from that, and then Van Halen 3, there's a song on there called Dirty Water Dog, which eventually is that song, or at least the, the verses. The verses to that, it's, a, it's the same. It's the same thing. Um, real quick, to address Mr. Sean Springs' question, hell no. He's mm -hmm. asking if I can peel off the solo, I think, <laughs> from Get the Funk Out by Extreme. Nope. I am a noodler. I have a guitar. I can play a little, but no, I'm not going to bust out <laughs> any Nuno guitar solos. Forget it. I, I'm a fan of listening to Eddie. I cannot play like Eddie. I attempt to try to play some riffs, but the solos, that I'll leave that to Johnny Bean. Well, I mean, I, I do, I do love playing that stuff from time to time, especially on 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 YouTube or whatever. Yeah, you know. But I mean, I I don't, you know, I, I'd rather. Who plays like Eddie? Own. Nobody plays like Eddie. I mean, come on. No, nah, no, but nobody maybe Wolfie like a little bit. He can. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, you know, Eddie's structured stuff, his his riffs, um, and his uh, rhythm guitar stuff. I love playing along to because he was uh underrated for that stuff the 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 actual riffage if you will the stuff that plays during the body of the song instead of during his solos that is honestly the meat of any van halen song and it's really i think the core of what eddie did great his solos are celebrated far more because it's in showing off and letting the fireworks go nuts oh speaking of which can i right I, right, but I mean, he was he was the fireworks. Oh, he, that's not long. He wrote all the music. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I found the effects things for that, and they're pretty cool. Um, oh yeah, somebody yeah, else did that, that, and I saw that. Who was that? Somebody else was on here, and they uh, were like, "Oh no, Brad." It was not all the reaction. Brad Nay Nye. Mm hmm. Um. Anyway, weird. Uh, yeah. When when you can do the 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 acrobatics that Eddie does on his solos, you're, you're head and shoulders above anything I can find myself doing, but I, I do love learning the riffs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in, in Nuno, I just saw, so I should mention real quick. Uh, I yes. saw extreme for the first time this past summer. Uh, they have a new album out for the first time in like 20 years. Who's 25. the guitar player? Nuno Betancourt. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> they couldn't wait to have their picture taken with Johnny. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Who's Matter the other fact, guy? Paul, Paul's over looking at Nuno. Get out of my shot here. It's just <laughs> me and Johnny. Nuno. And so they have their first album out in forever. Uh, not 20 years. More like 15 years or something. They did a fifth one after he was with Van Halen. Uh, mm -hmm. So spoiler, they didn't stay with Gary Sharon. Um, <laughs> but Extreme did another album in the early 2000s and then didn't do anything for a very long time. And now their, their sixth album just came out last year and they were phenomenal live. I saw them in San Francisco and uh, had a great time. And Nuno did several, since this was several years after Eddie had passed away, several direct nods to Eddie played. A when couple was of this? Recently? Yeah. Last year, summer. Oh, last year. Oh, because you, you, you see Nuno's playing a, a, a Bumblebee live. Did you see that? Yeah, he did play the the flight of the wounded bumblebee. No, no, the. Guitar. Oh, you mean he's playing the guitar? He's playing he's a, a bumblebee burn. guitar. Yeah. He's, got, he's a got a track at the opening of um, on their second album. He's got a little. He's there playing this. I don't recall that he busted that out at my show. Um, wow. But yeah, that's beautiful, isn't it? Wow! Uh, Thank you. You know who you are for sending this photo. Yeah, I've got somebody sending me some uh, inside nice. photos of that. Um, 
Nuno was phenomenal live. Uh, I really was there with my jaw on the floor. It was a little reminiscent of watching Eddie for the first time. And he also did several, he played several um, instrumental pieces that were nods to Eddie Van Halen. And I think it was the intro to Beautiful Girls or uh, maybe something off Fair Warning. And mm -hmm. he just sat on an amplifier uh, profile to the crowd and played this thing before in between songs. And then as everyone's applauding, he just kind of gives one of those and everyone knew what that meant. So it was just really a nice moment. He was showing off his fan, his fandom for Eddie uh, several times throughout the show. No mention. They didn't play any Van Halen songs or, you know, any of the Gary Sharon era stuff or anything like that. But it was in there and it was beautiful to see that. That'd be cool if they did, though. Like if so, they did play any of the stuff off Van Halen 3. I always thought it would be super cool before Eddie passed away. I was wishing we could have a Van Halen all-star reunion. Dave and Eddie would, or Dave, Dave and Sammy would both do a set with Van Halen, Wolfie and Mikey. And I thought mm -hmm. extreme should open for, the, for them. <laughs> and Gary could come out and play just that one hit song that they had, uh, which by the way, without you, the first single from Van Halen three, we'll, we'll maybe we'll start talking about the actual album here soon. Yeah. Debuted. It was the first Van Halen single ever to debut at uh number one. Really? It's the only single they ever put out that debuted at number one. It did not work its way up the charts. That's where it so landed. It's song. It's it's the only yes. song. Is that true? I don't know if that's true. That's Jump what me I out. Back then. Oh wow. So yeah, if you look that up, they, it started out number one. I think it quickly moved away, but um, it was a big hit for a, for a minute there because everyone was excited to see what is going on with this band now. Um, and so there was a lot of requests for it and stuff like that. People right. who were already fans anyway. They did a lot of press uh, for, for that for that record. And like I said, I was, I was watching most of the stuff on the TV set in Desmond Child's uh, studio uh, green room. Like the Matt Pinfield interview, all that stuff, all the that Matt yeah. Pinfield stuff, much music. They did, they, oh. did, they did the Canadian MTV stuff. They did all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Japan yeah, sure. stuff. And a lot of that stuff you can find on, on YouTube now. Um, but yeah, let's, let's look at some of these, let's look at some of these songs. Well, let's, let's talk real quick about the cover of the album. what do you think of this sure. idea? It's this old photo from the 1930s or 20s or something, right? Of the dude getting shot in the gut with a cannonball. Wasn't that, was wasn't, that one, wasn't that one of the things from Headbangers Ball? I don't recall. Was that on it, like the opening? It might have been. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. It was. I like, think it they, was. They had um, train wrecks and they had the car jumping over the the building and they had that. I know. I know they had that. On. A bunch of. Uh, copyright royalty free images it sounds like <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah this is a pretty old image and i think it's uh yeah. it's, it's actually usually... a video it's it's an actual right. it is, it's a film. you can it's see a the film. video of, of the cannibal hitting the guy i forget yeah, the guy's man. name in the chat what's the what's the guy's name i saw it written down the other day when i've seen when homer simpson do it as an homage about this. other than that yeah Hom homer's done this <laughs> that guy's uh, done everything he's amazing yeah he, he he was um, in the Smashing Pumpkins for a while, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, Billy Corgan, Smashing Pumpkins, Homer Simpson, Smiling. Van Corgan. Halen was on Simpsons a couple times. Sammy Hagar was on Simpsons a couple Visually, times. Visually, as nobody, a voice, nobody came on. Oh, Sammy came on and did he, a voice as himself. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's one episode where I remember seeing Eddie's guitar hanging in the back of the music shop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get me started and turn this into a Simpsons uh, show podcast. <laughs> I will next time. Yeah, next time we could do one of those. Yeah, yeah. So, Does anyone know who that guy was, or what it was called, or what it was even from? It was a sideshow kind of, you know, circus act in a way that this guy would take a cannonball to the gut, and all they did was in the probably the most boring font they could find, slap Van Halen three with a little lighting behind it, right on the cannon. Here we go. The group's first album with third singer Gary Sharon features an image of carnival performer Frank Cannonball. Richard's getting shot in the gut with, you guessed it, a cannonball. 
<laughs> Thank you, Siri. Thank I'm you, looking, Siri. I'm looking at that picture, and I'm I, I'm all that's going through my mind is da 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 the uh, the, the, the bang- bangers yeah. his ball. Um. Oh, uh, so Sean was saying. I think he's saying that um, Sean Woodall. We've got a couple Sean's in the chat saying that. Uh, I think he's saying Nuno did the intro to Women in Love. That might have been what I was thinking. Part of Eruption and the end of Hot for Teachers. So yeah, on these last tours, he's been do- doing a few nods to to Eddie, which was so cool. That's great. Um, but this album cover came out before I think we even necessarily heard any music, and I was like, hmm. Okay. I didn't really know what to make of this. Mm -hmm. Ron, your thoughts. (laughs) Headbangers ball, man. (laughs) (laughs) What'd you think, Johnny? Well, the first, I, I mean, I want, I want to say it was a little different, uh, uh, because usually let's say when, when, uh, when balance came out, when carnal knowledge came out, all those previous records, I'd go to the record shop, you know, I'd buy the CD, the cassette, vinyl, all the posters. See, eventually I would talk the record stores into giving me all the promotional stuff. So I have or had tons of the Van Halen promotional stuff over there. So you went and bugged the staff and said, hey, when you're done with it, can I have it? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, I did that with video stores when I was a kid. Yeah, for for movie posters. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had all kinds of, I had access to all kinds of stuff. When this record came out, I was busy working, you know, with the band, working with Desmond, you know, playing shows nonstop, recording, and I didn't have access to say Amoeba and Rasputin's records, like you know very well. So, so in Miami, they would have like one little record shop where I would have to go and buy this, and I didn't have, like I said, the access to really, or the time to really study up on a lot of stuff. So when this album came out. For me, it really was like brand new. Like I, I really didn't hear much about it. Whereas you know, before that or or even after that, like when you a, were a different busy. Kind of, when it, I was busy. Like see yeah. now, I got no life now. When a different kind <laughs> of truth came out, I knew everything. Yeah, yeah. Like I saw the album and cover the- before it was released. Like er- everything, right? When this came out. I, it was almost like buying it as a casual fan. It was kind of weird. Even though I was a huge fan, I had access to it as, let's say, a casual fan at the time. In so, passing, when it, kind of. so when it came, so when the album came out, I remember uh, the band that I was in, we all went to the record shop. I bought it. And then I remember we were at the, the, the singer and the, and the drummer. They were brothers. I remember we were playing the album and I, this was, I couldn't believe this was happening. We put the album on. We'd let it play for a little bit, and then they would just do this. I guess. I mean, I I would if I buy a record, I put it on. I listen to it straight all the way through. Yeah. We put the album on. First song starts to play. Hmm. Skip. Next song. For a few seconds. Skip. And this is them doing this, not me. So I'm like, what? I want to hear this. They're skipping every song. They're going track by track. They're just listening to five seconds, then skipping. They're like, nah, next, next, next. Wow. <laughs> so Dismissed I'm like, no. It right off the bat. So I remember the first time I heard this album, I was laying in bed. Hang on. <laughs> I was laying in bed with headphones <laughs> listening to this the first time I ever heard it. And then, so like I said, like I said, when, when you listen to, to a record, it totally takes you back to where you were, what you were doing. My memories of Van Halen 3 are driving around in a little Honda, driving around Miami at midnight after band oh, rehearsals. Cool. Just driving around the city listening to this record. And what was your impression? What did you feel about it? Uh, I mean, first of all, I thought, well, this really sounds like this is Edward's, you know, Edward's baby. It's Edward's solo record. It's Eddie, right? Like, that was kind of the vibe. Is it's, it's, well, the thing is... It's control. If you know, like if if you know, like if you ever heard like behind the scenes stuff or or like, like I said, like I've heard so much stuff over the years, like the, that wildlife soundtrack. From Eddie, about. you mean? Yeah, by Eddie. So when I heard this, I thought, well, this really does sound more like Eddie Van Halen's type of music. It really does sound. Than, you, you, than get the acoustic, band you got acoustic guitars. You, you have a you have a sitar solo. You have 
You have that one with Mike Post playing the piano. You know? Oh, is he playing? I forgot that he's playing yeah. the piano. So that was another thing is Mike Post was the producer that they'd never worked with before. But he came from the world of marketing. He came, uh, he came, he came from the world of TV theme songs. Right. One of my favorite Hill songs ever growing up as a kid was a song called Believe It or Not by the singer from the, real, named, from the true American hero or from the greatest called? American hero. Greatest American my favorite hero. TV it. show ever. Joey Scarberry was a singer <laughs> of that. Okay. And, and actually I didn't even know this man. I, I met this guy uh, a couple months ago and, and I, I, I asked him for a channel ID. If I would have known that he was the bass player on, on all the Mike Post stuff, this huh. guy right here. Hi, this is Leland Sklar, and you are watching Johnny Bean TV. It doesn't get better. Take my word for it. Cool. Leland, he was all over the Mike Post TV theme songs, all, all the Joy Scarberry stuff. So, so anyway, to get back to, to what we were saying earlier, when I listened to Van Halen three and I, I would, you would hear all the different things and different guitar stuff and all the different transitions. And it really did sound more like an Eddie Van Halen solo album, which, which I loved, which I loved, which will, you know, we'll get into this. I still would have loved a completely Edward Van Halen on the, you know, cover solo album where he plays everything the way Wolfie does or something like that. Right. Instrumental maybe. Right. Um, I mean, I, I really think if, if Gary wasn't singing on this, that's what this probably would have been. But, you know, uh, it, it just, um, unfortunately, I mean, a, a, lot of, a lot of fans heard this and it just, it wasn't what they were expecting at all. It didn't. Right. I mean, know. after after 20 years or so of listening to this hard rocking, straight ahead powerhouse rock, um that was very much played on radio getting mm -hmm. played on mtv mm -hmm. you know pop stars rock stars this was a weird left turn and it's not that it didn't have its stuff that rocked but it was more experimental than we were anticipating at all it was to say the least ex it was extremely <laughs> experimental i see what you did there i see it yep i got i got that reference and and unfortunately, like what we said earlier about the era when this came out, hey, Britney Spears was the next big thing at that point. And they weren't it, into experimenting it, at it that just, point. They were going for the top of the charts. Yeah. It, it, just, um, it just, yeah. Well, so the very first thing you hear, and I was trying to mimic it a little bit. I don't know the whole thing, but the acoustic mm -hmm. New mm -hmm. World. Uh, is what it's called with one W. It's all one word. New World. Um, it's da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's playing the melody that's in the upcoming track without you, and it's mm -hmm. kind of set to a waltz rhythm. A one two three one two three one two three, um, which was not how that song goes, but it was a unique way to interpret the melody of that and then the crazy thing is that he plays the entire melody at the end of this piece on harmonics which is like playing the guitar upside down inside out standing on your head well I I've, what, what what edward did in the studio see in the studio you can do anything he would have people think oh he just had the one guitar no no, he he probably had literally twenty guitars in one sure, room, all the different layers, different things, different. Th yeah, it's all about the sound. It's all about the tone, tone. And getting however it on you, a how, record that way. However you achieve it is is mm -hmm. is is the way you do it. So, that thing is that that song, New World, and that the Without You. Most of the songs, a lot of the songs, Edward was primarily a piano player. Right, that's how he, he started learned out, classically classical trained. piano, him and his brother, Alex. So a lot of those Van Halen songs, believe, believe it or not, again, were written on piano first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unchained was a piano song. People don't know this. A lot of fair that. warning. 
a lot of fair warning were piano songs so i can see a lot of the the uh the van halen 3 stuff being piano first i mean that's a perfect yeah. example to go from new world into without you transition from one one to the next right and which i actually think it, it i i could go for a different recording style of it but it's very raw and you hear the the pick on the strings sometimes oh, yeah. you hear and i think he was still using that metal pick that the infamous metal pick he was using uh, for metal a lot of this album mm -hmm. and uh and he used then mike post too. on piano yeah he did yeah and then mike post on piano uh because it sounded like it was live but you're saying that one was probably layered and dubbed and um all that that one oh i new, don't know it new feels world? like it was live yeah like one take maybe it took a lot of times to get it but it feels like it's live in the studio it could have been time. live because it it's just live it's just the uh, acoustics of the piano and the uh, uh, acoustic guitar mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. and it's beautiful because especially when it hits that dun da 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 dun da 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 dun kind of section it feels mm -hmm. very um i don't know it feels uh classical more classical than what we're used to hearing and that's van halen mm -hmm. that's van halen. That's tracks like that tracks like new world tracks like spanish fly tracks like big bad big bad bill tracks yeah. like duh, 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 duh. all that stuff <laughs> it's, it's van halen i mean there's so many different layers to this band a lot of people don't in, right they, they don't, they don't I, get it you know when eddie died a friend of mine posted on facebook or something oh man i loved jump i'm so sorry to hear he died i'm like yeah me too but uh jump was <laughs> the well, most commercial most poppy thing they ever did and it's just scratching the surface of what they were what what johnny was just talking about about eddie the classical stuff like that and lewis had just asked the same question and that i asked johnny earlier this week and i even sent johnny the video for the hearing aid song and i i asked johnny i said i wonder why i listened eddie, to that yeah I said, I for the first time eddie, ever i sat in my car and i watched that i said i wonder why eddie was never asked to play on that uh, what's the hearing aid song it was uh, 1985 86 ronnie james dio it's a bunch of them got together and, and it's kind of money yeah, it's kind of like but... it's like a heavy metal version of we are all the world kind of yeah okay and if they're taking the name i'm sure from live aid turning it, it well, into hearing aid for being well, loud yeah but it was got here it. it was hearing aid, like a hearing aid your ear hearing aid right but there's like george lynch carlos cavaza buck from quiet uh, riot oh yeah. yeah carlos and buck from blue oyster call and eddie ojeda from twisted, twisted sister, sister. M Ingve. Spinal Tap. Vivian Campbell. Yeah. Spot, well, yeah, they say, yeah, I like, did you see? Oh, you didn't want, you just watched the video though. You didn't see the, the making of it. No, I'll watch and, it. I'll watch it. In the making of it, they interview Michael McKeon or was it mm -hmm. Keegan? Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the bass player. And he's, he's sure. like, he's like, mm -hmm. Spinal they, Tap. They yeah. Yeah. He's like, they, I didn't want to play in there. He's, you know, he says, why, why play? You got that Ingve Malmsteen. He said, and I watched him play and I just, I can't play like that, so I took my guitar and made a coffee table out of it. <laughs> then they asked him why he didn't sing, and he goes, uh, I got pipes, I got pipes I haven't used yet. And the bass player's like, he'd break the board in there if he was singing. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but but anyhow, I, you know, it's like all these, Neil Sean is on it. Oh, wow. Uh, all these great guitar players are on it. Uh, Brad Now, yeah. Brad Gillis, you got to admit, he did good with the whammy bar on there. Uh, that well, that's kinda, his thing. Yeah, I know. But that's I mean, his thing, yeah. when when you said uh, I, I, they could have put Eddie, you know, obviously in front of Brad, that kind of would have blended together right there. I I what? definitely see Eddie going, and eh, that's too much. Uh, thanks, I'm, well, thanks, but Johnny, no thanks. But tell tell him what you told me why you say that. Well, two reasons why I don't think Van Halen was a part of that, and I could, I could be wrong. But yeah, it's, it's possible. Guessing. It's possible they were too busy working in the studio on 5150 with Sammy at that time. Right, like why would they do anything else outside of you know yeah work on that second thing and i think the, the most obvious thing is you listen to that song you've never heard edward play on a yeah, heavy metal I, song it, before ever it, it, it sounds like a dio song yeah i mean it yeah sounds he like was a DO, yeah but there's uh he was not the heaviest riffage guy but he 
his attack was heavy, yeah. but not the vibe of the whole song because he did have everything from humans being to Big Bad Bill <laughs> in well, his that, repertoire. Well, but that's where it kind of stayed was in there, not well, way to the extreme and the Iron Maiden and the yeah. You know. Well, you know, I was thinking that, but then when I hear Brad Gillis in there, I thought, well, then that that leaves an open spot for Eddie, you know, right somewhere where that. Eddie would have fit in. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But it's got like Jeff Tate sings on it, Kevin DeBro. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'll have to check this out. Judas uh, Halford. Yeah, Halford sings. All the it. biggest heavy metal acts yeah. of 1984, 85 are on there. Yeah. Dio, that's uh, even funny. a singer yeah. for Blue Oyster Cult's on there. Then then everybody, then when they do the course, it's everybody. You got right. Ted Nugent, Chris Holmes, they're all. It is a We Are the World. Yeah. Everybody singing to the yeah. microphone thing. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it, it's just, I just, I thought it would have been neat. To have it and i and, and johnny when you said you know it wasn't his style i thought okay you're right then i went back and listened to it again and right where the brad gillis i thought then that he could have fit in right there it, it would have led great into brad's playing yeah yeah but like i said edward never played on it as far as we know commercially that was released ever he never played on anything oh. that was metal and that's metal really and but like, like i said yeah. It's possible and, and, Van Halen was working in the studio at that time with Sammy on their first record, and I and, they, and Eddie always they wouldn't do said, anything like, outside of that. If you or asked Eddie, "Hey, what's the new music you're listening to?" He'd say, "Just whatever we're creating in the studio." He wasn't super keen on keeping up with his contemporaries, um, and so he was not like on the cutting edge of what's the latest pop charts or rock charts or any of that stuff it was mm-hmm. really much more about uh i don't know i like this album that came out 20 years ago by alan holdsworth or something you know but lewis has a, a good point here neil sean wasn't a heavy metal player either but he was on it. true and actually actually did a killer job too yeah so i mean yeah yeah and you know and eddie was shy too but, i think that's a big room full of a lot of big egos and eddie was kind of a shy guy and uh yeah would have had to lick her up pretty hard to go into a room <laughs> like that comfortably. So yeah, they yeah, did, I that, see him they just did going, that whole ah. song in just two days. Wow, that's there's, cool. There's two drummers on it. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's yes, Peter Gabriel. So Sean, that was the one he always mentioned. <laughs> is in his CD player now. I just, I, had I that just one. think it. I just yeah. think it would have been cool to hear Eddie on that too. Yeah. Yeah. It would have, but it would have been weird. Because you've never heard him solo over anything that metal ever, yeah. ever. And that English, like Black Sabbath being his first real rock influence was about as heavy as I've ever heard him reference even. Except Dimebag Daryl, I'd say. He he said he was a fan of Dimebag. He buried him with the, the Bumblebee. Um, so that was cool. But I think that was also a lot of their personal relationship. He got to be friends with the guy for a little while. And that mattered more to him than than Riffage, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone hey, would have melt. It's possible, you know. Maybe mm-hmm. they wanted Eddie for that, but nobody else w- would have would have played. It would have been just Eddie soloing <laughs> on it. Put their guitars down. <laughs> I would have taken that. The uh, <laughs> Mike, the one, the one that got the most reaction from the recording, the, the solo was George Lynch. Yeah, he had amazing tone. The screaming demon humbucker pickups. He he made his own pickups, right? Those are great. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he has an amazing tone, so I can see that happening. I got anyway, I can pick up. how about that Van Halen three record that came out 26 years ago this weekend? Oh my gosh. I'll get back into it here. So, so we start off with that, um, new world track and it's only a minute and a half or so of an instrumental leading into, um, the second track over there without you, which was like we said, the first single released, um, it was. I don't even remember it getting, uh, I think there was a, a cardboard sleeve single of somebody getting their picture taken in a photo booth. It was like, it was like feet, little saddle it was shoes, shoes. Yeah. sitting down at the bottom. It was like an old photo. And then it said without you on it. I don't know what that marketing was. That was weird. Um, and then I think, I don't even think it had a B side on it. Do you remember it having a B side? Uh, I don't remember. Like a second track on it. I think it was just 
a promotional something. But the whole the whole theme to the album and the tour was like a circus. Yes, that's true. Now that you mention it, that was something you made it. I mean, that's what the guy at the cannonball has to do with. That's the guy at the circus. The stage setup was a, a a three ring circus. Yeah. So the center ring is the biggest. Mikey over here on one side had a smaller ring, and Eddie had a smaller ring over there, and then Alex was in the back. But wasn't there a big eight ball on the on the ground too? Yeah, you're right. I don't know I what think? the billiards has to do with the circus, but maybe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a drug reference. But also, uh, would you remember the drum head that Alex had on this tour? Yeah, the yellow one. And what was written on there? Do you remember? It was it was uh, like Sanskrit. It was Sanskrit, but I I thought he said. What, what, what did it, it say? You mean? Yeah, was it like the band name? That, or something? I'm not sure. In the chat, always ask the chat. Yeah, what's it say on on the 1998 the... tour drum head, written in Sanskrit lettering, something on oh, the drum head. Right. But anyway, um, without you, I thought was a fun funky song, and just hated the recording of the vocals on it. I mean it seems almost out of tune. That's the problem I have with it. The ly- And also the lyrics throughout this whole album are weird. I don't know that I love all of those <laughs> at all. Um, but uh, does anyone know if Eddie ever played with Frank Zappa? Was there an album he played with Frank? Hey, look at that cool shirt in the middle there. Oh, wow. Where can we get one of those? <laughs> so I do have three shirts from this. I think I bought three t-shirts at this concert. And I think the other two are still in storage. I'll see if I can point them out if they pop up on here. Wow. Um, yeah, you're showing. So the the first picture there is the actual CD, uh, the regular release. And it had a little sticker. I wish I'd kept the sticker on it there. Um, mm-hmm. And the one next to it is the tin, the special edition, which didn't have any extra tracks or anything on it. Same CD, right? It was the same album. But it, no it, extra it a, discs or anything. No extra music. No, it was just a collector's tin. It was not a, a jewel case. It was a, a aluminum tin box that snapped together with mm-hmm. the top and bottom. Had this cardboard sleeve that slips over it like that that says Van Halen three on it. And you're right. Everything inside they had little co- photo cards of things, and it was all know, circus it, related. Circus themed, yeah. All circus themed. All these cards, and then, like I said, like carnival, and then there was a guitar pick that came in. Yeah, there too. you're right. Like, I... And Ron, you'll like this. It was a pink Van Halen oh. logo guitar pick. <laughs> hey, I found one pink guitar I'd buy, and I have two of them. Somebody, people have sent me them. I have, I have. Them. Oh, cool. Up over there in the guitar more, I have two of those pink Van Halen logoed guitar picks from. Is it the the Rings logo? Yes. It's the rings logo. Well, they kept the, the Sammy Hagar logo for this era. Yeah. Yes. And it's it is photos of them at a carnival or something. Eddie, oh, I there have, there's a great picture of Eddie. Oh, there's all the things. Right yeah, there. there's the pink pick. There's the pink pick, Ron. There's the pick. That's what the CD looks like. And those are the cards. And it's all circus era. It's them like like in roller coasters and all kinds of stuff. I wish I dug that out. I, I'll have to bring it back sometime. Um but I have everything except the CD because high school happens. Um, <laughs> I had a portable CD player. I was walking around high school listening to this in my portable CD player. I left it somewhere. Someone turned it in eventually to the you know lost and found. But the CD oh. was gone. Well, oh, naturally. that's like or it might be the other wallet. way around. The, the original your- CD was gone and. And I have that one. Turn in your wallet, but there's no money or cards left. Exactly. Somebody (laughs) turned in the wallet without the, yeah. And there's the stage with the giant uh, three ball on it. Yeah, there it is. It's a billiard ball, but it's the three. That's that's the key there. And Eddie with his strange little um, outfit here, a turtleneck type of thing. Mock turtleneck or something. I don't know. I I would say three would be the album three or the third singer. Right, that's what it was. I mean, I, I get that, but I don't know why a billiard ball, but I guess they just figured that that was a... And then I guess, look at that. It's got the the, the lyrics printed on him on the other, on the reverse side. Oh, that's everything there, yeah. And I had a t-shirt with Eddie on it doing that, showing off his tattoo and his muscle shirt like he had just won at ski ball. You got that from the show, right? 
Yes. So that's one of the that shirts was, I had. Yeah. Yeah. And then do you it remember the, the um an Eddie shirt, you know? Yeah. And then do you remember the uh when they were when they were uh promoting this album, they were on the covers of all the different magazines. There was a guitar world of Edward standing there and the shirt said who the f who the is eddie van f halen is eddie van halen yeah, yeah. And he's wearing the cool tweed i've actually got one over here i'll show you uh i i can tell you the story behind that if you want to hear that may not be the, the material here but his hat that he wore all the time through that was one of these there you go yeah, and he, Johnny he was hat. wearing it on that uh it's just backwards <laughs> That's a Johnny Bean yeah, hat. He would wear it backward. It, it's it's a yeah. News, it's like you know, my newspaper hat. boy. Look at that. Right. I like that. Yeah, it's this was my dad's. Um, <laughs> oh, awesome! But I had one like this, and because of Eddie, I wore in high school. I have pictures of me wearing. I should dig up that picture. Now, see, when I see those hat on backwards, I'm thinking Doug Heffernan from King of Queens. <laughs> I'll allow that. <laughs> um. Let me find that picture. I have a picture of me wearing my Van Halen 3 t-shirt and one of these when I was about 18, 18, 19. Cool. I'll have to find that. Yeah. So anyway, so the story of, of the Guitar World magazine, I mean, I guess I guess I, I could try to find it on here, but it's it's Edward on the cover, and the, he's wearing a shirt that says, who the F is Eddie Van Halen? The story behind that. But it doesn't that, say F. They, they put asterisk, asterisk, K. Right. But in the magazine, but I think the t-shirt itself had the word. I think cover. that was an yeah edit. in the in the t-shirt itself. The story behind that is Gary Sharon showed up for the photo shoot that they were going to do, and Gary Sharon was wearing that shirt. That's right. And he Eddie put it on as a joke. And th and that whole shirt though is is uh, is a nod toward is a tribute to Keith Richards because Keith Richards did a photo shoot where he wore, wore a shirt that said who the f who the, who the f is Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger as a no right? as a nod yeah. to his friend. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's the connection with, with all that. Here, I'll, I'll show I'll show you guys that if I can find it. Let's see. By the way, in the chat, we know you guys are here. Smash that thumbs up. Smash that subscribe. If you're brand new to this, if you like your Van Halen, this is the place you want to be. Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you have any questions in the chat, you can mention one of us by our YouTube username <laughs> and it'll turn orange for us. While, while you guys are looking for something, everybody in the chat knows how I hate pink. Okay. But I did find one pink guitar that I would, that I would buy. Hey, there you go. If I can get it to zoom in. There we go. Oh, cool. So you I would, it, I would you buy would that. Buy it. Well, yeah, the, 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 it's not showing up right on the camera, but it's, it's definitely, it's, well, I sent you the picture, John. It's, 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 it's a, a different shade of pink, mm -hmm. but I would, I, I would that buy that one. Cool. Okay. I'm, I'm still I'm, looking for this old photo. I know I'm, I'm looking for stuff too. <laughs> in the chat if you want to help us out there's a phone number on the screen down here text us if we say hey you know there's a photo of eddie guitar world 1998 wearing the shirt if anybody wants to text it in feel free let's see i'm trying to find it too put on wood yeah look at that. here i'll have to i'll have to look it up and oh all my nice kind of frame steve it. rosen yeah oh that's right we were going to give something away Let's uh, we'll give away one of those guitar picks, not yours. I, I've got several. I'll uh, I'll find one. And tonight's giveaway will be one of those guitar picks. For you guys. There you go. Let's see. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, that's both sides of the pick right there. Yes. Man, it's almost impossible. I can't even find anything. Anyway, I think you guys know that the guitar world. <laughs> That's really cool. Here. I like that. What's the case behind it? Uh, look like? I just, I, I, what, this picture? Yeah, the picture that's behind the picks. 
I don't know. It was on the card. I I put it on wood. I framed it on wood. Uh, it's the Van. Han- it's the balance uh, cover. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Oh, okay, the kids on the seat on the seesaw. I thought you meant the the wood background. No, no, the <laughs> little picture behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And do do you remember, uh, Mike? Do you remember when we were leaving the Balance tour at the very end of the show? That that cover comes to life on the video screen. No, did you see that? I don't remember that. Yeah, it has the two kids, and it's it's the same kid. He's right. It's one kid. He's screaming. He's like the other one's pulling the hair. He's like, yeah, one's pulling the hair. He's like, the the album. Like when they were when they were making that cover, I they filmed it. Oh, and it okay. comes to life. You should look this up. It's super cool. And the kids go, see you next time. And they're waving. Oh, really? It's pretty I, cool. That does ring a slight bell. I'll Heck. have to look for that. It's pretty cool. So anyway, that, that there's the t-shirt. That shirt. So my there's girlfriend at the time was getting into photography and she was like, well, you've got the hat. And I was growing some kind of long hair at the time. She's like, we should reproduce that. So she made me the shirt somewhere. I think it kind of fell apart, but. Oh, we were trying wow. to recreate that photo. Wow. So I have a shirt somewhere that mostly had that on it. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a poster. Yes. I had that poster hanging in my, my bedroom as a kid, as a teenager. There you go. Because that was we... the fold out from the Guitar World magazine. From the Guitar World. Keith Richards, Mick Jagger. That is one of the cooler pictures of Eddie. It's just, It's just him being him. Here you go. So th- this th- that's where that comes from is this. Yeah, I've seen that one too. That was I had to learn yeah. about that through the Van Halen one, but Mhm. Yeah. <laughs> so there's Keith Richards. So that that's where that comes from. That's a different joke though. That's the guitar player saying, "Ah, our lead singer's not the star. I'm the star. Who the fuck is Mick Jagger?" <laughs> Look at this. And apparently you can get t-shirts. <laughs> ah, there you go. Mick got his revenge. <laughs> like it we need to make some who the f is johnny bean t-shirts <laughs> cheech, i love you know, that idea right on that che- i love cheech that idea we'll sell at least five of those instantly i'll buy a couple <laughs> give me a couple of those yeah and a bottle of anything to go <laughs> oh my goodness so anyway How are we doing on uh, yeah, I want to uh, get back to the track. So hey, without you, it's a cool right song. Here, yes. Oh, there's the time. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at this. It, it, yeah, we've gone right. almost five hours, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did like, I did learn to play without you pretty much all the way through as a kid. Um, and I, I think I, when I was on your show, when you were at Guitar Center a little while ago, that was one of the riffs I busted out that I loved that was... Um, this weird fast paced and I still can't do it smoothly, but it's uh, before the breakdown after the second chorus or something like that. Yep. He goes into a, let's see, how's it going? Oh, you know, that, that whole riff and he does it three times, four times really fast. And it took me forever to learn it. And I still fumble through it, but um, I love how it was. over and over again um and it i don't know it just felt like it was out of nowhere and out of place in that song but but worked so well um and so i loved playing that along with the record and it was one of the few riffs i felt on the record were, were really just a fun noodling piece of that th- but anyway that was my favorite part of without you hmm. um and then one i want was a weird one it, it opened with a cool again uh that song and a few others really i heard on one i want the the metal guitar pick and what was the sound he was getting from his guitar in that era it was kind of almost like a sitar i was telling you a while ago it felt like an electric sitar or something like that well there is a sitar on the album is not that on that hearing... not on that one though no okay no uh it will get to that That's one a little, little later on. there is yeah a yeah you're right you're right song. i remember what it is um, but, but there was but a what, hint of it on one I want. I, it's just in the tone. 
because what you're hearing a lot of the tone and he actually goes into this that guitar world issue that i just showed you if you read that they go track did by track point. we should probably have that yeah i don't have it here i didn't bring it up I've they got do it go track mind. by track the, the interviewer yeah. asks edward each about each song and he answers about each song like either what he was using or what the thought process behind it or or the idea or whatever but what you hear on a, on a lot of a lot of these tracks is the the guitars you hear like like more of like clean cleaner tones right less not distortion. super not super distorted in fact one of the songs the one we had talked about earlier um dirty water dog mm -hmm. the one that was the stompin 8h 8h he actually says he actually says in the uh in the in the, in the uh interview that the the tone he was going for on that one was was an andy summers tone oh okay right yeah they didn't play with a ton of distortion they just played the clean tone really loud right yeah, yeah. so so uh anyway i mean that's something that's very interesting about about this album and about the production of it is is there's there's a lot more space going on there's the, the, yeah there there is some overdub stuff but if you listen with headphones like i said my first introduction to this album was all headphones you know mm. you do hear a lot of space a lot of sparseness a lot of um like dry there's a lot of dry uh parts going on not so much a lot of effects but then there, there is that it's just there's so many different things going on with this album and i think that's why a lot of the yeah. hard harder core van halen fans were like wait a minute yeah where's our distortion sound like, where's our this doesn't sound like what we're used to yeah okay. that's the first thing that went i thought when i listened to it today. this, this i mean does not sound like van halen to me i mean maybe it sounds like it, eddie it's his playing but it's not the tone that we were used to hearing for sure. It, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like hearing, uh, more of like, like, uh, what, well, like what you said earlier, like big, big, bad bill is William. Now it's kind of hearing more songs in that style and that like record, like drier recording, you know, different instrument, different instruments going on, mm -hmm. just total different, different thing from what people were used to. Well, speaking you know, of Dirty Water Dog, one of the instruments right at the opening of that was his pool sweeper, right? His pool brush. He's sweeping the floor. He talks about this in, in the Guitar yeah. World interview. He had said that way they started, he was sweeping the floor and then at the end, and then he ends up- but I thought it was a pool, like a pool, uh, not skimmer, but the thing you scrape, you brush the pool surface of the pool with out by the pool. He was using that metal pole and the brush on the floor and they recorded that on the ground. And right. you even hear him drop the pole at some point. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. So the instruments were crazy on this one. And you can hear him say say the S word oh, on crap. that too. Yeah. The very end of that is him going, Shh. Yeah. 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 And I know, Ron, you have no idea what we're talking about because you just heard the record five minutes ago. I swear to God. That's okay though. 26 years old is brand new to me. Yeah. Well, hey, that's that's the best part. You know, you got Brent, dude, you guys, Ron got brand new Van Halen today, man. To love it or hate I it, wish brand new Van Halen is brand new Van Halen. I wish we could, I wish we could say that. Yeah. I mean, and you, know? and you do kind of learn to listen over the years with different ears, especially if you put it down for a decade or so, you start to yep. hear different things that you didn't really necessarily notice, especially on better, uh, stereo equipment or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the production of this one, I didn't feel had the polish that we were used to from Mike Post. And I, I think I, I put a lot of the blame on the disjointed feeling that I ended up getting. I think Ron felt on Mike Post and and the Van Halen brothers, assuming that they were perfect engineers for, you know, for the mixing and all that sort of thing. Um, they had guys there, but they were really pushing the, you know, um, the direction of that. And I don't think it came out as good as it would have with some of the guys they'd worked with in the recent past or again in the next. Well, they didn't do anything after this well, until 2004. I think one of the reasons I think one of the major reasons why Van Halen 3 doesn't sound the way people are used to. Now, you got to go back back to the Roth era. There's what, 10, 11 years of, of Roth yeah, era, 11, 
11, you go to the Sammy era. There's 10 or 11 years of the Sammy era, mm -hmm. whatever. And when you, you know, in those bands, Roth was like the leader of, of that era. And when Sammy joined, Sammy led the band. Sammy was the leader. Right. So when they're in there writing songs, recording, editing, producing, all that stuff, the lead, this show, this is the perfect, perfect example of showing you how the lead singer can totally make a record. If that makes sense. Or break. Yeah. You know? So and, and Gary wasn't the, the, the powerhouse driving everything in the studio this time. I think it was far more Eddie this time around. Wouldn't you say on this album? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like I said, this is Eddie's solo record. Right. So Gary was kind of like, Hey man, you're the King, whatever you want to do. I'm on board. Uh, here's some lyrics. Do you like them? It wasn't all right, guys. Here's what we're gonna do. He that was not. He didn't feel like that was his place, and I understand that entirely. Well, but see, that um, opens up a whole other aspect to it too. Then, so if yeah. that's the case, I, I don't know how. how yeah, Lord Eddie Christ might be best when he's um, got someone else taking the reins for those. Um, maybe yeah. that just produces the better quality that, stuff. That, but yeah, he was allowed to go nuts with this one. And nobody reined him in, which might have been a, a good thing. And, and it, it, it depends. Some people really like this album. Um, yeah, you know what? Raymond's saying this. I agree. I would have loved a remix of this record by somebody who really knew what they were doing. Andy Johns worked with them for a long time. Um, who worked? I don't even know who did the 2004 stuff or the 2012 stuff. But I think the production of those sounded better. Um, a remix remastering. The engineering, you mean? The master or, or the engineering? I, that and kind of an overall production. Uh, but producing? See, overseeing the producing of it. Um, that would have been interesting. Let Bob Rock do it. John, yeah. John, John. Bob Rock Hanks. also made the other most hated rock album <laughs> ever in St. Anger, right? Yeah. Uh, Metallica. I Saint never Anger. heard that one. <laughs> really? Oh, so I'm going to have to listen similar, to that. It's a similar issue, though. I love the writing and performing on St. Anger. I don't like the recording of it. I think the recording sounded bad. As as Sean Woodall is saying, the drum sound did not feel up to par on the, on Van Halen 3. I think that's a, a fair point. It's it's yeah, how it was recorded. That's one thing I know, Stick. You know, I'm playing it through subs. Keep Saturday, Bob Rock and, far and away, he like, says. And it's like the, the drums were like, no pun intended, but they were like a shell of what they normally were. Mm. And and his brown sound has shifted throughout from, from Dave through Sammy, even into the 2012 uh, Another Kind of Truth. Um, it, it evolved and, you know, it was a nebulous thing, this brown sound. You couldn't, but it, I think a lot of it came from Alex's uh, percussion instruments that were very woody. And well, that, that that's where it came. Time. That's where that term came from. Was the brown right. sound? Was was that would how they would they would talk about Alex's snare drum sounding it's his brown snare drum sounding, and then woody. how the other instruments play around it is kind of that's yeah. how I thought of it. Well, that's we we, we kind of talked about this uh, a week ago or something. We were we were talking about uh, recording in the studio because Ron was talking about how he was doing some tracks. His bass player came over and they were putting tracks down, and and I was saying, well. You know, if you record a record, not so much these days with sampling, with home studios, you can kind of get away Pro with stuff. Pro Tools. Yeah. Pro Tools. But back in the day, if you were to record an album, you start with the drums. You got to get the mm -hmm. drum sounding exactly how you're, how you're going because you have to layer everything on top of the drums. Right. And that, and that has to do the with the rhythm for everything. Sure. Keeps the rhythm, but it has to do with EQs. Right. Because you get all kinds of, of sibilance and And I don't know if they did this it this way. That. Do you? Do you know if they did it differently on Van Halen 3 or did they lay down drums recording first? Generally, what they would do is they would record uh, a song at a time. As mm -hmm. far as, as Van Halen 3, I don't remember the interviews that Edward gave yeah, for that. Yeah, I but, don't know. But I, but I would think maybe they, I know they took a while to do the album because most of the record was done in like 1997. Yeah. 
right when people were wondering what was going on right they were just bunkered down and i would i would think they would probably write a song and 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 work on it and record it and then put it away and probably work on the next one um i know they came back to the album later they switched uh tracks there was a song that was supposed to be released called that's why i love you that's why i love you yeah and that was taken or off twilly, last, we called it on the internet it was taken off at the last minute for i think josephina right they swapped it yeah josephina being an interesting acoustic ballad haunting kind of in moments about and and i saw a review somebody doing recently going what is this weird love song to some chick named Josephina? It sounds so weird and there's weird lyrics about it. It doesn't sound romantic. It's not. It's about, it's an ode to mothers, which is very sweet, actually. Hmm. Um, and they were both writing and singing about, you never, nobody ever knows the woman their mother was before she had children, right? Nobody knows who that, they've never met that person. So it was an interesting hmm. uh, meditation on who do you think this, when she was a young girl, can you imagine your own mother as a young girl? It was a sweet sentiment, but <laughs> what's that? What did you say, Ron? Marty McFly knows. Yeah, exactly. He's the only one. He um, kissed his mom. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's it was a it was Yuck. a sweet thing. It's a weird thing to put on a Van Halen record, though, right? Like we're used to Hot for Teacher. We're not used to this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Real quick, Ron asked an interesting question. What song off the LP, which I don't know if it was ever put on vinyl as an LP, uh, needs the most help? And I'm going to, right away, my mind goes to the very last track. What do you think? Where is it? The last track is You're how many, you're not how many say, is it how many say I? How many say I is the last one. There we go. There's all the songs right there. And it is Eddie on a piano just him and he's singing the lead vocal and Gary sings backup harmonies on the chorus. Mm -hmm. That was rough. Wolfgang, however, great vocalist, great singer, hell of a range. Eddie, it was rough. And he was into 12 packs a day at that point, I think. Well, you know, Eddie was the original lead singer for Van Halen. When he was originally 19, you know. (laughs) <laughs> originally when they were a yeah. power trio well right. it's before they're called van halen they were called mammoth mammoth yeah that's where Mam. that's where wolfgang got that's the name where, for his band which i love i love that he just said i'm taking that and as an homage to dad that yeah hardly anyone knows yeah so well i mean do we again should we go track by track and again yeah Ron, absolutely I, I'm sorry. I know we you just around, heard it today but, but yeah. uh, let's just go track by track real quick and and in the chat you can play along um, and by the way, on playback, if anybody's even watching this far into the into the into the VOD, drop comments below. On, Sean, on I agree. The, I love the piano on that track too. Dude, that's one thing that if they if they were to release more stuff from the vault, yeah, more of the Van Halen piano tracks, I would love yeah. to hear that stuff. He played piano all the time. We yeah. hardly ever got to hear it. Yeah. 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 Um, so, okay. So, so without you goes into uh, one I, I want. want, and I thought the lyrics were bizarre on this one, but it's a good groove. It's a groovy it's, song, right? What they were going for was kind of a Panama, like a Panama groove. It didn't hit that for me by by even half <laughs> as far as the as far as the energy of it. It was more of a shuffle and a, a groove, but so not it was like, like Panama. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> if you listen, listen to the be- listen to the rhythm of the beginning. It's like do, Panama. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it, sort the of. guitar. The guitar. It's not even up to the same BPMs though. Like it's not. It, no, it, but it's 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 a similar. Yeah. Similar type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the same. I can kind of see some of that. See. Yeah. Just didn't have the attack on the on the like again cleaner tone. He doesn't have the cleaner tone. And just different song. He was going for. Yeah, very different just song, diff- I thought. Just different song. So. What did you think of that song, though? Did you. Was that one of your standouts on this album? I mean, I mean, you know me. I mean, I love it. You everything know what? That I shrug kind of says a lot about this whole album. I love it all. I love it all. But 
one I want. I really liked the. Uh, I really liked the. Like you said, the groove. Yeah. I liked the uh, the breakdown, like like before the next verse. Da, da, you know that da, part da, that has da, a little da, lead part. Da, 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 ba, 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 yeah, has a little lead part section. Yeah, I really liked that. I can make um, those sounds, but we can't play the actual recording. But correct. I can mine. I can sing it for you. A little correct. Bit. But so after that, from afar, I like this track. Do you want to know something funny too? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to remember. Is that the one that that starts with the with the guitars that pan left and right? Was it that one or was it? Um... It is from afar. It goes dun dun dun. Oh, bow bow bow. Yeah, it's, it bounces. It's an echo. Dun dun it's an echo dun. The, so he might just play, <laughs> but it went. It repeated. It goes dun dun dun. What's funny? What's funny is this yeah, track pan. that we're listening to, this track that I did 20 years ago, this is me actually, thing. this this music, this music bed. This track, the beginning of this, here, I'll, I'll just play the very beginning. The beginning of this song was inspired by this, by the dun, dun, dun. If you listen to the very beginning guitar here, and this again, this is me right here. Oh, I gotta rewind. <laughs> rewind. Listen. So it goes. It goes from one over side here. to the That's next side here. to the next side. That's I, that was inspired by from afar. Just just the production of that. Of course, it sounds nothing like it. Right, but the idea is there. The sure. idea of doing that when I recorded this 20 years ago was from the beginning of from afar. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. I, that song there you go. from afar. Yeah, it doesn't sound like that at all. It's a very it's a very slower. Again, I, I'll use the word haunting. There's a mm -hmm. minor key, right? It was like a, I don't remember the notes, but it's, it's a lot of minor key stuff. And it's about somebody who feels like he's not worthy of somebody's love or something. And he's just loving her from afar. He's just going to kind of keep his distance because he's scared of her or something. But, um, oh, hang on. Um, I just think that the the overall mood and vibe on that song were so well executed from what I think the intent was. And I loved the guitar solo on it and it gets really slow and isn't that the one where it kind of goes? It has a psychedelic weird... middle with psychedelic the engine coming in and yeah. Which, if I were to relate it to a song, the one that pops into mind is the one on the the 2012 uh, David Lee Roth. Um, what's Different the song that has that psychedelic feel to it? Um, um, how, uh, um, I have honey, to pull it up. honey, sweetie, baby doll. No, that there's a little bit of that. Well, actually, I can't bring it up on the streaming services, can I? No. They took me off of there. <laughs> oh God. Um, it went away. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a bummer. But anyway, there, there Eddie kind of went into that psychedelic stuff. I think he did it also on for an awful carnal knowledge with um, Pleasure Dome. It goes into an another world somehow. It gets a little a new psychedelic, world. as you said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I do like From Afar for that reason, and it's again a, not a lot of these songs were terribly short. This was an over an hour long album. And this one goes, what does that one say? 524 or 624? Uh, from afar, 524. 524. It's a not a short song. Dude, once um, was seven and a half minutes. Yeah. And we'll get to that one in a, in a minute. Um, in between, they do Dirty Water Dog, which I believe the name comes from Wolfie. Do you remember the mm. story that he used to say? I think I heard I heard I heard something about this. So it's actually a song about a peeping tom. It's really kind of a creepy <laughs> theme. Um, a guy calling himself a dirty water dog, uh, looking at girls, and I think I like what I see. Ugh, I thought it was really <laughs> gross. <laughs> it's like, dude, don't be that guy. Don't even sing about being that guy. Um, but Eddie said. It's what when they would go to New York and walk around, if they took the kid out to Central Park and there's those guys, the hot dog vendors are out there. 
Right. Yes. And and he thought he saw the the dogs being cooked in the boiling water in their trays. And he and the water was looked kind of gross. He'd say, Dad, are we gonna get a dirty water dog? A <laughs> Something like that, face. yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's a but it's a fun song the riff on that one is good again i didn't love the production of how it was recorded and again i swear to god i feel like they did something to the recording of gary's vocals where when he's in his highest ranges it's not hitting just right hmm. um ron did you did you feel like any of that like gary's i mean were you familiar with gary's voice before this oh yeah i've always liked extreme matter of fact that's that's what made me mad they broke up extreme right to do this to do uh, this yeah (laughs) they really did it was they put out their previous album in 95 and this came out in 98 so you know i again i mean just when i i like i said i played the, the whole thing went straight through went right back and played it again and it just seemed like I don't know. It just seemed like it was lacking power. Well, I think one of the things yeah. is Gary's vocals did not sound like they have on any other record. No, he didn't sound like, like he did on on Extreme Records either. That's right, Extreme Records and, and before and after this, he Gary yeah. sounds better. So, um, and I mean, so it was, when it was just weird, it was weird, and it's almost like did they just take his recording and pitch it slightly to not be in the right key? <laughs> just. It's there's moments where it just doesn't sound like the right key. And like, I don't think it's him because he's a great singer. So I don't know. Hmm. But Dirty Water Dog is fun. It just didn't. It didn't do all the things I wanted it to do as far as a Van Halen song. Uh, and again, I thought that the material that he's singing about is really creepy. He's singing about hot dog. Yeah, I, I wish it was just about street vendor hot dogs you want let's let's take a call really quickly here all right let's do that hello we got on the line. you're taking calls what's up you guys taking calls we're taking phone calls who is this it's laz it's music laz calls. you know yeah, laz laz man what's up, laz man what's up what's up guys I know that is this your favorite record, Lars? Um, no. Yeah, they can, can hear, they can they hear can you. Hear you can't hear, hear them. Oh, I can't hear them. Oh, okay. No. Maybe I can hear them. Okay, well, Lars. Uh, We're all yeah, YouTube man, that was a great show. Um, I just wanted to put my two cents in on this album. Because, We're still on. Um, I know, I know. <laughs> I want to put my two cents in on it. So, Do it. Here's the thing, man. This is 1998 or something like that, right? 99? Yes. When it came out? Yes. Yeah. I remember... At that time, Extreme and that song that, you know, what's that open arm song or, or the, the one that, you know. More the, Than Words? The campfire song. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Great song, but people who bought their album thinking that was what the band's going to be about were like, what the, you know, because the rest of it was pretty metal, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but bottom line, man, Sharon can sing. And that band, I think, with him would have been really killer if they would have given it some time. And like what uh, Mike was saying, and even Ron, I think were saying that, and I think you were saying too, that if they had somebody else helping out with the production. But you know, I, I think at that time, Edward was in a different frame of mind. He wanted to do his own thing finally for once, right? Really do his own thing. And, and kind of like, you know, if you've ever gone to shows, like some of his favorite people, right? Think about, like, you know, Alan Holdsworth. Have you ever gone to an Alan Holdsworth show? I have. I mean, not your garden variety, typical rock and roll kind of stuff people want to hear on the radio. More and experimental. the fact that they got a number one debut hit out of that album in the first place, you know, songs like Fire in the Hole that sounded like a Sammy song, really, um, all the way through. That album was kind of in different places it was you know different you know like a producer might have picked different songs and says no nah, we can't put that one in we can't, you know um you know it would have been temple men would have been no 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 this is out of rock you know this has to be for the for the, the rockers you know and i think that's kind of part of my voice kind of part of the the issue with that album that surprised a lot of people because i remember eddie on the radio 
coming out, you know, I think him and Alex, and even I think even with Gary, they were they were talking about that album on a radio show. How this is the best music that they've ever written. I remember him right. saying, "This is the best <laughs> music, you know, Van Halen's ever done." And so, you know, you had this build up, and I think the song they played was "Fire in the Hole," which was like, "Yeah, this is great," you know. But then I heard the rest of the album, and there was it was good music and all, but it didn't seem like, you know. It didn't gel. It was something that just didn't quite, they weren't gelling yet. And I think it was really sad that that they didn't get a chance to put out album number two or work a little bit with each other more in the studio to really mm-hmm. create their sound as a band. Because like you're saying, Johnny, that, that was Edward's kind of solo. Right? Totally. Yeah. So, totally is. So that's my two cents. I think Fire in the Hole is the best song, best, most Van Halen song in that album right mm-hmm. I think it was, a, it was a good good music if you listen to it there are like you can listen to that without the singing and the, the, the some of the some of the mm-hmm. some of the lyrics were kind of odd <laughs> I mean yeah there's that one song which is the one that's got like that wind cracking kind of like almost Broadway-esque kind of sounding song which one is that that's like about like some you know almost kind of like you're singing about some uh Maybe he means Josephina. I don't know. Yeah, Josephina. Josephina. Is that Josephina? See, Probably. I would not have guessed that's about a, a, someone's mom, but <laughs> it's just some, for whatever reason that song just didn't seem like a Van Halen song. Right. Yeah. So anyway, uh-huh. that's my two cents. I have to, I have to do that because. I'm about five minutes away to rock it out with my sister and uh, the band that we're kind of, they have a band. I'm just kind of sitting in and having fun, rocking out, throwing in some cool. great sound. Cool. Yeah, right on. And I just want to go and say hi to everybody because you all rock. And uh, yeah. Dude, right on. And we're going to see you tomorrow, man. Music Therapy Lads show. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow's show is going to be cool, dude. We're going to be setting up the Loops uh, Lobster <laughs> event that we're going to be putting on the next day. Cool. I did find my heavy, the, the metal zone, not heavy metal. The, I found my metal zone pedal. Nice. So maybe I'll do that. I'm going to take it tonight. I'm going to mess with it tonight. Cool. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, maybe I'll do a demo of the metal zone pedal since we did the boss uh, overdrive last time, right? Mm-hmm. The uh, OD1. And we'll do the yeah. uh, the first metal kind of pedal that came out with which was the metal belt. Yeah. Was, I think it was before. Okay. The heavy metal. Cool. Yeah, that'll be cool. All right, right on. Well, All right, man. I'll... Thanks. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome. All Walk right. on, Laz. Stop calling. We'll see you later. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. You can make fun of me now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The Laster. Just kidding. Yeah, I don't know if you met Josefina. Uh, maybe maybe there's some other ones that were kind of theatrical, as he was saying. Um but yeah, I mean, really, they all are, because the, that the that, fact, that was that was the the Sharon influence, was right? Kind of the the Queen. Uh, you know, that was another thing is that he came from a very different era of influence as well. Uh, he's about ten years younger than anybody in that band, or so. Mm-hmm. So that that did change what he was into and what he was bringing into it. But can I ask a question? Because yeah. see, I'm even though I have, even though yeah. apparently I have one of the greatest uh, selfies in in uh, in rock guitar history. You know, it's a pretty damn good one. Um, I like this one myself, but um, <laughs> father and son. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, I have selfies with Eddie Van Halen too. I don't, yes. I don't have I don't have them loaded up here, but. Let me ask. See, I I really don't know all the extreme stuff. I know more than, more than words. I know get the funk out. I know I got into them. The commercial stuff. Let me ask about Will about Gary Sharon. Let yeah. me ask about about Gary Sharon on the extreme stuff. Were the lyrics a lot like the lyrics on Van Halen Three? No, I think he no. went wilder on this. It, there, you can hear he does sing about more political stuff than Van Halen ever did, and that showed up on this Van Halen album. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know some of it was raunchy stuff in the early albums um very sex drugs and rock and roll i don't know how drugs were big into it but extreme was uh eclectic they had a they had a different um 
you know, songs would be about, in fact, their third album was kind of a concept album in a, in a way. I don't know if you definitely call it that, but uh, it's called Three Sides to Every Story. Mm -hmm. As in their first album was called Extreme. Their second one was called Extreme 2, Pornography T. Um, and then the third one was Extreme 3, Sides to Every Story. Um, and then they gave up on the number thing after that. But um, <laughs> the three sides to every story, there's some, there's a political stuff, there's some anti-war stuff, there's some just straight ahead rock and roll stuff. But yeah, the lyrics, I feel like he stretched himself even further on the Van Halen record and went weirder than he ever had. And then on the fifth album they did after he was with Van Halen, there was a great ballad he did that sounds like it's about a breakup it's all about breaking down and and uh, all these terms that he uses that when you then go back and listen to it again and go, oh, wait, this is about his computer dying. <laughs> and he's like, don't go, don't fall apart on me now. And like all these things, it's really, it's really clever and funny. It's, it's called Johnny's song. Johnny's last song. <laughs> is it called I'm in AOL hell? <laughs> no. What was that one called? Um, I think it was called Interface interface uh, yeah inter so anyway anyway so yeah three sides is one of the best albums he says uh who's saying this michael tagler uh best michael, albums ever up, doesn't get the credit it deserves it should yeah um he dusted it off last week and listened to it a few times yeah it's those albums are are interesting i think my the first three are the most interesting and the fourth one had a few hits, but I didn't really love the fourth one very much. Um, but yeah, I think Gary went a little overboard. I think he should have kept it straight ahead rock and roll. Um, hey, that girl is pretty. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm rocking out with my boys kind of stuff to just the Van Halen stuff to kind of keep it in the ballpark before to let people get to know him a little bit. Um, not do a straight up imitation of anyone lyrically, but just keep it in a similar vein. And then once you're accepted and you're in the band, maybe then start to do the ballad or the bullet and the Josephina stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe once people have kind of accepted you already, they're more that, open to that stuff. The, the that, better name, a better name for that album would have been the Van Halen experiment. Yeah. <laughs> At least then you're like, well, we don't know what we're getting. Exactly. And it's admitting that this is all experimental. Don't expect mm -hmm. success necessarily. I mean, um, that, that's why they should have toured first. Yeah, would have helped. And maybe written the songs on the road while they were together. It, it would have been more like rock stuff, I guess. I don't well, know. And he did a great job because they only had one album of original stuff with Gary to play on that tour. So they did do a handful of Sammy stuff, a handful of Dave stuff. And see... That's and again, I didn't see the tour live because I was I was busy. But you yeah. saw it. I know. A oh, lot they of busted out Unchained for the first time in a decade or more. Yeah. Well, Sammy actually, they did. No, Sammy did sing that. They they, they actually lot, did Unchained. Right? They did Unchained on the Right Here Right Now tour. Believe it. Really? Or not. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I saw that at Storyline, like and never... I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. In '93. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So not on that record. Not on the live album, but in support of that live album on the road, they busted that up. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. That I didn't um, know. It felt like they hadn't played it in forever. And Yeah. Um, but see, that's what a lot a lot of fans loved was that they dug out all those older Roth tunes right. that you didn't hear. I'm the one. Mm -hmm. Somebody get me a doctor. You know. And Mikey sang all, on that one. Uh, and Mike, Mikey Michael took lead it? vocals on that one during that tour. Yeah. And that's yeah. what he's, he's doing again on this tour coming up. The right, Sammy Hagar right. He does that once tour. in a while. He's going to be doing the Van Halen stuff. And what were you, were you saying, or was it Ron saying, you didn't think he could handle the Sammy Hagar, the highs of Sammy's vocals? Was one of you saying that? Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe I misunderstood <laughs> something. Remember Laz? I mean, Laz called up and good. talked for you about know, he, ten minutes. Maybe he he has a hell, a hell of a range. <laughs> Gary has a hell of a range, and. He could do all that stuff, but he did it his way. And actually, some of the ways he sang Unchained or Panama, there's little changes in there that I go, I think that's even better. You know, <laughs> oh, and, it, and it's stuck with me. As he's rolling like, I around. I like how he ground. interpreted that. 
So anyway. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, the next track that was, again, kind of controversial and, and uh, polarizing was Once. And I think you really like this one, right, Johnny? Me? Did you? Oh, me? Were you a big fan of well, Once or no? Well, it's a keyboard song. Yeah. It's a keyboard song. Like I said, I mean, as long as Eddie Van Halen's there, I, I love it. I love Eddie, Eddie, everything anyway, he did. Yeah. I love. But Once, again, that was the one where they made a music. That was their last music video. And barely anybody saw it because it was only this size. You could watch it on right. AOL. It, it kind, of, kind of remember when Phantom Menace trailer debuted and it was right. all like and this. It was- Two You're by like two this? pixels. Oh. And it looked great at this size. Yeah. This We're size like, wow, actually looks good future, man. when it comes to a Star Wars trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, that was uh, only the next year, yeah. Or that year. <laughs> it was uh, 99. Well, the movie came Nin- out in 99. I don't, I don't remember how early we got the trailer, but it might have been 98. Late 98. It would have been around the same time as the Once music video. Because I remember watching okay. them both on the same computer. On the same AOL, yeah. On the, on the, same, on the same computer at the, 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 same, the same size. You know? And actually, yeah. I, I, I have a photo. If, if we're Facebook friends. That's coming out that. again this year. They're releasing the 25th anniversary of The Phantom Menace. Dude. If if that comes back to theaters, I'll I'll go look at that. I'll okay, this was act this is actually two thousand two. This is me. Yeah, you showed that earlier today online, right? Right there. Look at That's that big a, old monitor. That monitor I found on the side of the road as I was <laughs> driving, tell. and I and I brought it home. And if you look real closely at my screen, I'm actually using uh, like Pro Tools. I'm oh, actually editing music right there. Yeah. I, did you see my comment on Facebook about that one? And look, I was Tom before Tom was Tom. <laughs> That's like MySpace Tom. Before MySpace. Yeah. There I we just go. went, I left one comment on there. I said, hashtag bring back the soul patch. Oh, <laughs> you, want, you want that? Bring that back, baby. That was a good look. I'll bring it back. Very 90s. Okay. Um, once is a slow ballad. It is synthesized, synth heavy. Um, and then there's that sitar. Does he play the sitar on that solo, or is that an effect on a pedal or something? Year to um, the day, no, or once? once? Man, I think Ron is Ron is the one of us that actually listens. To this <laughs> I can hear it in my head. I can hear it. <laughs> I haven't heard any of this in years. Um, wah, wah, wah. He uses kind of a wah wah pedal. One of the vid- one. I know one of the so- one of the. One of the guitar solos is actually backwards. Maybe. Yeah, what was that? Oh, that was um, Year to the... Or not, that was Ballad of the Bullet, I think. You know, what the sad part is, I listened to this on YouTube today. Oh, oh, he played okay. a bass for the guitar solo on that one. That's right. I do recall Sean that. Sean Woodall. Yes, Ron. Sean knows what's up. I, I listened to this on YouTube today, but it didn't tell me what song was what. It was just one song after another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once I, I don't. It's a love song. It's um, I, I don't know. There's. It's hard to explain that one, but it's um. His vocals are a little more echoed. It's like he's a little more distant from the microphone, and it feels like it's in the ether somewhere. The vocals are coming in mm. from, and then he gets closer for the choruses or something. And then there's some just echoed yelling in certain parts. It's, but it's a driving song. And so I remember people comparing it to Genesis back then, which I don't know that I completely heard, but I, I kind of got that the vibe might have been like a Genesis ballad of the late 80s early 90s or something like that or maybe the earlier genesis Ma- yeah maybe that there's genesis from way way back before phil collins yeah that could have been what they were referring to i don't know mm-hmm. peter gabriel um, and, and then so that's a weird one it's got a music video it's hard i mean i think you might even be able to find it now but it's going to be the lowest quality video you've ever seen um on once you on can once. find it now on 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 YouTube, but it's again, it was like this. It's so it's tiny stre- that it's stretched just to this. pixelated. Yeah, so it's it's, it's kind of pixelated, yeah. Distorted. Um, and then while Johnny's gone, I'll cover the show. I'll take over. Hey, it's Mr. Mike over here on the mic. Um, Fire in the hole. 
was the rocker, which which um, Laz attested to earlier that that was the one that was like, first of all, it's got fire in the in the in the name of it, and it's a phrase about warfare, right? Like grenade, fire in the hole, right? It's like okay, that's kind of rock and roll. It's explosive. Yeah, there you go. Um, and but what Gary would say is it's about uh, it's a the whole theme is about being a, a loud mouth. You got a fire in the hole. This hole, he said. He points to his mouth, right? Remember that interview? I remember him pointing to the opposite side at one point on one interview. <laughs> That's after we ate Taco That's Bell. That's a very different themed song. Um, sometimes yes, the old Raymond. videos, what? Are they fun to watch? Yeah, of course they're fun to watch. It's just we, we want we want Peggy, we want them to be uh, remastered. Um, but the fire in the hole song is such a great riff. It's it's like oh there's Eddie there is a bit of like oh I recognize this now. Well, he uh, brought back the, he brought back the Steinberger the trans trem for that one. Okay, you could talk the gear there. I tell me what that means. Remember uh, summer the nights. Headless guitar. Yes. Oh, he brought that back the headless guitar. Well, I don't know if it was headless at that point because they were making little gangs. They were yeah, making the little... regular Wolfgang guitars with it's it's a bridge where you can change keys. You can basically pull up and you can lock the bridge into a key and play in a different key. The song Summer Nights starts in one key and then goes to another key. Right. Yeah. For that intro, it's different. Yeah. So songs like Summer Nights, Get Up, um, uh, some of that wildlife stuff we were talking about earlier. And then um, uh, what's the song? One of the ones off Best of Volume 1. Me Wise Magic is a transfer. Okay. Oh, that round, 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 you know, all that. Yeah. He brought that back for, for, uh, for fire in the hole, for fire in the hole. Yeah. It, and it's definitely during the breakdown, um, on that one and, and toward the outro where you hear Gary screaming some poetry in the, you know, in the back of the studio where the mic is barely picking him up. It's a weird, weird thing that he's doing, but Eddie's doing some really crunchy, grungy stuff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's kind of, Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like okay this is kind of rocking but it's still there's a fire in the hole and it's like okay you're not you're just repeating it over and over again the 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 chorus is just him saying that phrase four or five times um maybe it was taco tuesday (laughs) again you have a very different interpretation of this song than i bring a fire something different to you um, but it's about being, he calls, he talks about people being windbags and, um, what is he, a word to the wisdom tooth to tell or not the truth. There's these weird lyrics, but it's all about verbalizing nonsense or being all talk or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I, but then, huh? Nah, never mind. <laughs> I, there might be a line in there about biting your tongue, Ron. I don't know. Um, but it was, it was, a fun song it just i don't know there the guitar solo didn't crank up to 11 and and have that eddie energy on the guitar solo but it was still interesting it was still a cool thing to see eddie doing something different so that's i still like the song i can still groove out to it and as laz was saying that was the more fun more the most van halen sounding song on the record i think Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. I can't. I can't do all the talking now, guys. Come on now. Uh, <laughs> what's after that, Josephina? Okay, diving into that one. Yeah, Josephina? I talked a little bit about that one already. It's that's acoustic, uh, right? It's an acoustic. It's an acoustic one. Is he playing it on an acoustic? Or is he playing a really clean tone on a Wolfgang or something like that? Um, I know. I, he I think it, I remember. He him played playing it on it. acoustic live. Live, he broke out a right, PV acoustic he did. guitar. Like an ovation looking kind of thing, right? Yeah, it was a PV though. Yeah. It was a PV. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I think I saw him play. Remember when they did a Japanese promo? And I think he played that one on an electric, on a Wolfgang. He's playing an electric PV uh, Wolfgang, but it might have had the the Paizo pickup. So it sounds acoustic. Right. That's what I'm getting at. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, it's it's an ode to all that mothers do for it's a nice mother's day song. Um, and it's actually some of Gary's best vocal work, I think on the album. Um, mm-hmm. there's a part where he's belting out, Hey, Josephina, 
like that. And it's, mm-hmm. it's with 10 times the energy. I just did it, but <laughs> I'm just, I'm not going to go for the high notes, but when he belts that one out, I'm like, okay, that's, that's the tone that they were probably going for on the whole record. And, and so there's moments, there's little gem moments in there like that. Um, but it, he and Eddie could kind of sit down. I think during the live show, they would just sit down on the edge of the stage mm-hmm. and it was just the two of them. Mm-hmm. There are drums and bass in the recorded version. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole band's playing on that one. And again, I don't know how far back the stuff with Mikey goes where Mikey wasn't even being recorded or Eddie was playing the bass. Um, I don't know. If I think Michael, I think Michael did say in an interview what he did play on. Oh, so there nice. were some songs on this that he didn't play on. Yeah, I think yeah. Edward did a lot of the music himself. Which, and you you were talking about this, I don't know, not long ago. That's not weird that the guitar player, the pre, the, the, the primary musician of a track. The primary writer of a track? No, that's how, demos track. Are, that's how demos are done. Yeah. Sting. Sting would play all the instruments on the police demos. There you go. You ever heard? there? You can, you can get... Uh, uh, which which is the album Ghost in the Machine? There's a mm. whole list of demos out there of just Sting playing all the stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. So they, as they're composing, they need to lay down the bass track, and it's nothing. It's not to de- necessarily diss the bass player. It's just a an efficient way to make a record. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the bass player can go out there and kick ass on stage every night. That's that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike's background vocals are not as prominent on this record, says another Michael. Oh. Um, yeah, that, that was something that was starting to slip away. Uh, that's, that they, that's know. one of the reasons why this doesn't sound like Van Halen to people is because Mike's background vocals aren't there. I think on without you, you can hear him, uh, during the chorus. Um, cause, cause the Eddie and Mike are going, uh, oh, my guitar's already up to him. Uh, <laughs> they're doing that mm-hmm. while Gary's singing the vocals. Mm-hmm. And so you still get a little bit of that, but it, you're right. It's it's mostly missing on this album, and and that's the whole thing with most of it. It's it's missing those pieces. Yeah. It, well, it, it's like a, a jigsaw puzzle with twelve pieces out of it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it, it it's the, the 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 powerful bottom end of the drums is not there. Eddie's being Eddie isn't there as prominent as it is mikey's not there and gary's not his vocals aren't there well i might also argue that eddie is too much there because we all know as as i'm sure you'll read in 500 pages of tone chaser he's a tinkerer or he was a tinkerer he was always messing with things tweaking things he's always there it is he was chasing tone but i don't know that he ever and it wasn't just tone it was I wonder what this would sound like. And I wonder what, oh, that power drill over there. Actually, actually, I think it makes a sound when I hold it up near the pickups. He was always doing crazy, goofy stuff. And he wasn't the only one. A lot of There's a lot of people out there that play music that do that sort of thing. And, and I think it's a musician's brain that really experiments like this. When there's nobody with a vision of what the record needs to be, like a producer or like a David Lee Roth or a Sammy Hagar, to rein it in, and Eddie's free to experiment and kind of go nuts. That's where we get some of this. Uh, you know, it, it's a little all over the place. Well, what, what I mean, the, the well, when I say when I say it's it's lacking, uh, I'm, I'm talking about Eddie's past recordings. Yeah, yeah, for you know, sure. Yeah, you know, but again, and you know, you know, let's let's the elephant in the room. This time, Mikey has been screwed over how many times by the Van Halen brothers? Oh. Uh. It's ugly, man. You know, first you go from a quarter share to now we don't want you to have that. Nothing. Now, we, now we want you to take your rights off all the stuff. I mean, yeah. You know, was this how? I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's well, so I, many things to factor into this, and it it, it just seems like it's a, a combination of everything. Disaster's the wrong word, but I can't think of a better word. For yeah, I mean, word. It, I'll it's personally. Like, this is almost the album that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> I'm a lot of people one. agree with that. Um, I, I do believe that uh, Eddie and Alex are very, it's a tight inner circle with those guys. It was always very like, if we like you, we're loyal to you, but boy, is that a small number of people. And people like Sammy and Mike, and I think Wolfie, 
are much more like, hey, I love everybody. And they're much more um, congenial, I think is the word for that. And um, there is a bit of pushing out of, of other people with the Van Halen brothers. But those that are around still playing music, I think are much more into, hey, let's love everybody despite our flaws and differences. And so I think it was more about bringing Wolfie into the band in 2012 and 2007 into to 2015 than it was about pushing Mike out, but they felt they had to do that to get him in. But yeah, it was like, okay, we're done with you, man. Like you're severed from the, the family now, which well, was really I mean, sad. You know, when, you know, they, they took away his quarter share. Yeah, that they, was then, not then cool. they just bought outright his rights to everything he did prior. In 2004, they did that. And yeah. It's like, you know, and it's like, you know, how much, I mean, how much, why are you trying to ruin doing? the guy? That's what I felt like. What's yeah, what did he ever do to you? Uh, yeah, he did nothing but help them mm -hmm. and give he, 100%, or 100%. He may not have been the primary songwriter or, you know, but he, he was, if anything else, a great character in the story of Van Halen. Um, his yeah. playing was great. His antics he, on stage were great. And his, his vocals, vocals were great. Yeah, yes. made, made it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't ever agree with Eddie's eddie and alex's decision to push him out but um it's weird like i have those kind of feelings against my heroes you know this guy but i've got them all over my wall too <laughs> so um but i i know that he was a flawed individual in that way and that uh who he chose to love mattered uh pretty strongly and yet a lot of other people like sammy people who are like sammy are like i love everybody man there's very very few people I don't want to be around in my life. So except Dave. <laughs> yep, there's a few. There's a few. But yeah, I mean that's the whole thing. And 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 listening to this, it just just brought all that back. Yeah, you know, by this time you've screwed you've screwed uh, Mikey over how many times? Yeah, this and was now, Mikey's last album with them. Yeah, so it's like okay, so well, you know what? I'm not going to put everything into it. Yeah. I mean, he was still great live, though. I, I do like that they let him on that sh on that tour, seeing somebody get me a doctor, and they and he. I think he still got a full bass solo on this tour. So, anyway, hmm. It's just a big, um, I, I, and that's from someone who just heard this today. So, right, right, yeah. <laughs> um, year to the day <laughs> might be my like, number. <laughs> yeah, year to the day track number nine might be my second third or second or third favorite track on the record it is a deep dark blues song that goes really dramatic and i really like that and eddie's solo on it is long and cool and dark and twisted and it's to me one of the best tracks on the record you mean number track 53? number nine well on on what i watch it'd be about 53.72 <laughs> That's a, that's the you should have been watching it on this this playlist here on YouTube, um, <laughs> and there's some great there's some great video of that live that Sydney show of him playing this um, one of the mm -hmm. one of the TikTok things I follow posted him playing that solo the other day. I'm like, damn, that was good, man. He was in the zone for moments like that. So if you're if you're only going to listen to a few tracks on this album, throw Year to the Day in there, and it is a a heart-wrenching uh post-traumatic moment of this guy looking back on something really tough that happened a year ago to this day whatever that was you know i don't really know he doesn't mm -hmm. say it's since you went away it's a year to the day since you went away so it's a kind of a traditional um heartache song but with maybe a real about, ugh, maybe kind he's of talking about it. sammy <laughs> it was more than a couple of years ago that the sammy stuff happened but <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't think it. I think it's much more a uh, traditional um, bluesy heartache song, which was very cool. Thoughts, yeah. gentlemen? And well, I mean, the cool thing about about that track again, uh, when you saw them live, and you're the, out of this panel, you're the only one that did. I'm the guy. Yeah. A year to the day, that song would go into the guitar solo of the song, and it would go directly into Edward's guitar solo in the concert. Mm -hmm. Oh, then, okay. And then he would come back, and then they'd go back into the song after his solo, after his, you know, eruption, cathedral, mm -hmm. you know, the whole the whole deal. Because he Spanish took a, 
long several moments for this solo, but it is one of the most scorching blues type, like Jimmy Page style guitar solos I've ever heard Eddie do. Mm -hmm. It was much more emotion than than fret work, you know, and there's not a lot of like tap finger tapping and stuff. It is just rich, emotional guitar playing, mm -hmm. which I don't know that we got quite enough of that out of Eddie. Um, he was into doing the crazy stuff and doing the, the tricks and the backflips uh, on the fretboard. When he got really deep and bluesy on something, oh man, was that good stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, I love that one. And again, that one's what, eight minutes, eight and a half minutes long, that song? Yeah. That's the longest track, I think. That's the longest track on on here, and that might be one of the longest. Yeah, on here. I mean, yeah, it might ever. be the long one of the longest ones they ever re recorded. Ever. Yeah, I think Cabo Wabo before this was like the longest song they ever did. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think. Um, and then the next two are primary is a. This is where that sitar came in, right? Mm -hmm. So he's actually playing an electric sitar, which I never saw. I don't think I saw him play it live. I don't think he's, he's busted playing, out a he's, sitar on stage. No, no, he's playing a choral sitar. He's basically choral. playing, it's called a choral. He's playing the same type of sitar that he double-tracked the guitar solo for Ain't Talking About Love on the first record. No kidding. If you listen, next time you listen to Ain't Talking About Love, go to the opposite side, the side that Mike is on, the bass. Oh, You'll hear okay. a sitar playing, this, doubling the guitar solo. No kidding. That yeah. I never knew. That's really cool. Um, it's a minute and a half intro to Ballad or the Bullet. And since Ballad or the Bullet is about, it's a political song about you need to fricking vote if you want <laughs> uh, liberty in this country. Um, and because it comes first and we call the election before a general election, the primary, there, there's the name. Um mm -hmm. It was a weird song to have on a Van Halen record for them to be like playing a rock the vote song. But musically, it did feel musically, pretty Musically, isn't that the one with the slide guitar? Um, how did it go? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. There's a, there's a bunch, there's, a, there's like, uh, what do you call it? Is Janice here? Somebody wake up Janice. The, the, <laughs> the, the resonator. Janice. He busts out and like a, a resonator, resonator guitar, and he's playing a bunch of slide stuff. I don't this remember is the song, the right? Ballad so of the Bullet. Yeah, it's possible. I don't remember it being a. Yeah, I guess it is. It's the one that goes dum 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 dum. Yeah, well, that's primary. That's the end of primary, isn't it? That's primary, but then I think Ballad of the. Maybe he does it there too. I don't... Ron, you heard the songs five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't know one of these songs from me. <laughs> that was that was song one hour and four yeah. minutes. <laughs> oh, oh wait. Okay, Sean. Okay, Sean says correct slide solo. Okay, it is. It's heavy. The guitar is heavy, but then you get like a right. Right. You get like all the slide stuff over that. Yeah. Jam there with Mike. Go. Johnny. Johnny jam circles around me. Um, we've jammed. We've. I don't know. At the same time, <laughs> yeah. it'll be like, here, I'll jam. And then here, you take the guitar and you jam. <laughs> we'll meet up at the Guitar Center next time. We'll have to, man. I, I, I'll we'll, just play rhythm for you. We'll jam. Um, yeah, we'll jam. so Ballad of the Bullet is, it, it's still a fun song because it is really funky and um, has a lot of energy to it. But mm -hmm. even, I'm a very political, I'm a kind of a political junkie. Like I follow a lot of the news and listen to debates and stuff. Uh, on TikTok, not even like official mm -hmm. political debates. So I, I get really political. I think this was nerdy and cheesy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and it just felt like, okay, this Van Halen's not a political band. They, they've they never been like Rage Against the Machine or, you know, no. anything like that. No, they're fun. They're, they're more about, about fun and rocking have, and having, having a good time. And yeah, but this was an era of I don't know. Should we change that up? Should we experiment with that? So that's what they were doing. Um, I'm trying to think. This was the end, tail end of the the Clinton administration, which we then went into a Bush administration, and it wasn't even a, a voting year. Ninety six was, two thousand was, as far as presidential stuff. I guess ninety eight was more. There was a November ninety eight 
local elections, but it didn't seem to talk about anything specifically happening politically in our oh, world. It was just the, like, uh, wait, is that the, uh, uh, what the hell was her name? Blue dress lady. Monica. <laughs> Monica. Was that, Monica, that uh, was that 90? That was a little before. That was, that was before that. That was like 93, 94, but that was a little before. Yeah. That, that was time. first term Clinton stuff. Um, but it wasn't about that. It wasn't about controversial politician stuff. It was just saying, he, he quotes, give me liberty or give me death. Um, there's a bunch of like weird political jargon in there, but it's like cliche stuff, right? It's been, you hear said all the time or g- generic stuff. And it w- really did mm-hmm. not, I did like the, the, the refrain he keeps coming back to is uh, the pen or the sword. What is it? Uh, the pen is mightier than the sword is the phrase, but he says, oh, the pen or the sword can be held by the same hand. It's like, okay, that sounds a little profound. I kind of like that. But um, it was, again, a little weird departure for Van Halen to be singing about this stuff. But again, musically, it was a fun, fun track and it kind of catchy, actually. Dun, 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 dun. I like that groove. And then the very last one we talked about. What did you think of this? This was a, a first for Van Halen ever, Johnny, this last track. Having Edward on lead vocal. It's the only one he ever sang lead vocal on. Absolutely. On recording, I'm trying to think. On recording, maybe. But live. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. Live as a fan, you kind of got used to hearing Edward sing because for the past several years, when they would do that song that Ron likes, Da, 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 da. When they would do that, Edward and Mike would both take a, a they would take a, a verse, a verse, yeah. and sing, or half a verse, or whatever, half a verse. So we got used to hearing Edward sing that part of that uh, of uh, da, 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 why can't that, this be love? Why yeah. can't this be love? So I didn't think I'm, he sounded good on that one either. There's I don't know which recording I'm thinking of where he goes ah at the end of it. <laughs> Remember Ed, Ed, San, or yeah, Eddie sang, singing that, um, and then he just makes a weird noise at the end of it, and I was like, "Oh man, he knew he sounded he must like have saw pink." <laughs> what, was so, that like one of the commercially released videos? Like the was that the pay per view? Yeah, so. uh, yeah, because mm-hmm. he's going. Um, All I know is you've got to run to win, and I'll be damned if I get hung up on the line. <laughs> Because he's doing, <laughs> Sammy does a little ooh right there in the song, but Eddie turned it into like some noise the home improvement guy would have made. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like it's almost like he's laughing at how gritty his voice is. I didn't love it there. I think Mike sounds way better. Mm-hmm. He was clearing his throat, says Raymond. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as far as uh, how many say I, I mean, again, did you like the song? Yeah, I mean, like I said, anything. Uh, you like everything, Johnny. Yeah, I do. That's true. But (laughs) but anything, anything he did on any any of the piano tracks, those are some of my favorite, favorite Van Halen tracks. And if they release anything in the future, Van Halen, I want to hear more of the piano stuff. Yeah, the piano on that track is really nice. I love that it starts out, the very first notes you hear is like a low, I mean, it's the far left. It's the farthest the low you can go. It's like, dum. And then on the yeah. on the right hand, up high. And see, and see that, and see that, that's a signature Edward Van Halen piano sound. The super low, low and high. bass, the super, yeah. super low. Uh, I took a- He's bottom, uh, yeah, it's the last key on the keyboard. I, I took a, <laughs> uh, a music uh, theory class in piano class before the man, before the pandemic, and we had to do a recital. And I learned the intro to uh, "Love Walks right. In" yeah. on piano. Oh, okay, so I can play that. Only the intro, though. That's all I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you do your the left hand bass, it's a hell of a stretch. You're stretching out. Yeah, you got to use your thumb and your pinky to do it. You're way, it's way down low. And I remember when I when I played the song in front of the class, the teacher came up. And she looked at the sheet music just to make sure that I was playing it correctly. She's like, You're oh, like, no, I can't that's be- what it says. <laughs> She's like, I can't believe it was that low. Oh, it is. She actually yeah. said that, like how low it is. 
So anyway, so that that left hand on that piano for how many say I, that's that's a signature Eddie Van Halen piano sound. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So at that time, I mean, Edward was really like discovering a lot of new things uh, musically, new things. working with In Gary. You know, he got his band back. Basically, he got his freedom to do whatever he wanted for better or worse. I'll say he literally got to do whatever he wanted. And again, if you read that Guitar World interview, he talks about a lot of like spiritual stuff. Mm. Like you only see it in this one interview. Again, it's the one with the who the F is is Keith Richards. You know, (laughs) that T-shirt. That's the interview. And he did say about how he uh, he he started writing lyrics, you know, for the first time himself. He wrote this one, right? He would write lyrics. Yeah. Gary would hand him lyrics. He would write music to lyrics, which was never the case before. He would write the music first and he would give the music to Dave or Sammy. And, and they, they would, would write figure the out the melody and write the lyrics over that. But did he write, did Eddie write lyrics to this one? I think so. Yeah. I think, I think I did. Hear I think, like that. I think he wrote the lyrics to this and it was, it was, it, you know, it was, it was, just again solo eddie van halen a lot of fans weren't weren't ready for that it wasn't what they expected yeah but at the but Um, at the same time at the same time though really quickly yeah when you have when you have somebody like an eddie van halen someone who's so known for one for for being for what they do you know the tap he was mr this right like that was all that stuff When you're known for all this other stuff and you have all this other stuff there, that's where this album comes into play. That's where we got to see all this other stuff. This album was so personal to Edward. And mm-hmm. that's why when, when it commercially, when it came out and it kind of got panned and, and the fans were like, nah, I think it was very, it was very tough on Eddie. Yeah. That's why. I mean, they didn't make another album for like 14 another- years. 14 years yeah or something yeah well but they put out a, a second greatest hits with with three new songs with with sammy but that was it oh in 04 yeah in between in they didn't do a whole new album right for 14 years and i do think it was a lot right. of heartache from like god like we had it and we lost it or something he like felt I, like that but as i you're really saying, it's i really album. think edward really put he put so much into this record and and there's it wasn't it just wasn't embraced by fans i mean like i said i love it i love it but commercially it just didn't do what the previous records did and i think that was really tough on him just yeah um, i think if they if you know and there was talk at some point about oh what if we did an album with a different singer on every song and like you know that after, was before sammy and, that was before they got Sammy. well that was before sammy time. that was after that was after dave, dave. Yeah, I think that kind of idea kept rumbling around there because I kept hearing about it. Like, you know, we could do all sorts of things as Van Halen. Um, mm-hmm. If they had done another album, even if it was with Gary or somebody else after this, that was just as experimental. And the next 10 years were like, we're going to do goofy, weird. This is going to be our weird era, you know, and he kind of experimented and got to do these kind of solo records. I think this one would be regarded a lot better for being the first of that era of pushing the boundaries. I, w- I was messing with, I was looking into the history of the Beach Boys last night and mm-hmm. s- around the end of the 60s, as Brian Wilson started not touring as much, but getting really into the studio and trying to make that smile record, everything got weird, man, for like a decade. <laughs> Things got real weird, but they kept putting out the music. It didn't do as well commercially, but it was the real fans were like, this is where the really interesting stuff is. And I kind of wish Eddie could have done that for another decade, just kept making records. Even if they didn't sell super well, they still were able to, you know, afford to make a new album now and again and tour for it. Cause the band could have really done some cool experimental stuff before doing those reunion tours again and, and going, Hey, let's celebrate the old days again. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, he I didn't. mean, he stopped really. Well, well, a part of that was that that's when he got sick. And it was right after Van Halen three, right? right. Actually, they had been working the on the second. 
they had been working on a second record with Gary, and I believe it was done. I believe there is a second record out there. That's what or, I was saying to Ron in earlier there. before the yeah. show. I was saying, Ron, I think I think they either wrote a lot of stuff or even recorded a lot of stuff. I know there's at least one or two songs that people have heard from that second album, and that it was a lot improved from the last one. But I think Warner Brothers went, eh, eh, no thanks, this guy's out, or we're not producing it. It was it was more in the style of of maybe the older Van Halen or maybe mm. what a, maybe what a different kind of truth became right might Picking have been the what stuff. they started doing with Gary and then and then Edward got sick and all those I mean there was all those years they and then they tried to do the reunion with Sammy where they did write they did have some new songs but I think those songs I think Eddie it's the same case where Eddie did everything Eddie I know for a fact Eddie played bass on those two new songs because you see video of him playing the bass in the studio mm -hmm. with Glenn oh, Ballard. okay you know you see ah. that so so was, was Glenn Ballard not working with them at all on three he had no. nothing to do with it, right? Yeah. He had nothing to do with it. No, it Glenn Ballard Glenn Ballard worked on the best of volume one songs with Roth. And those, I Glenn, love those songs. Glenn Ballard worked on that stuff. And you guys, if you guys know who Glenn Ballard is, he's the guy responsible for uh, uh Jagged Little Pill. But he also Lannis, did balance, didn't he? Lannis Morissette. No. Who oh, that was Bruce no, Fairbairn. That was Bruce Fairbairn. Yeah. So did he do anything with Van Halen before that one best no. of? Or in not no. sense either. Just the, the 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 two songs, the, the two on the greatest hits, and then the two uh, on the best of both best of both worlds. Oh, there were three though. Did he do three or three, three Sammy songs? Maybe those three songs. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. That was interesting. It would have been interesting he, to see him w work with the Gary version of the band. That would have been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, just going into the comments real quick. Um, Michael Tagler said it was kind of the end of Eddie's creativity, it seems. But I will argue that if, and it took me a while, like listening to some of the songs on the 04 Best of Both Worlds, the new songs they did with Sammy. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the big hits? There was Up for Breakfast, which was kind of a straight ahead, Why Can't This Be Love meets Panama type of song. You got to listen um, to that one, Ron. Oh, um, It's About Time. If you listen to It's About Time, yeah. The rhythm stuff Eddie's doing is complex, creative. It's almost buried behind the melody and the vocals. But when I sat down and tried to play it, I went, "Whoa, what what is Eddie doing here?" Like I couldn't even hear it the first, you know, 6 months I listened to the song. Mm -hmm. Um so his creativity was there and God knows how much of it we never got to hear because it didn't get recorded. It was Eddie in the studio just doing his thing. Um you know, it, it didn't, it's, I don't think it ended his creativity. I don't think he could end his creativity, but he wasn't as interested in giving it to the people at that time. So all, all the, the two inch tapes that are in his studio, the vault, on, you know, the wall, all that, how much of it do you think is this type of stuff as opposed to the older stuff? Oh, I have no idea. I would think the majority of it is this type of stuff. Yeah, I would say a lot of stuff is just Eddie by himself in the studio hitting record and playing, right? Yeah. Playing everything. Playing yeah. drums, playing bass, At four in the morning, singing, doing like so doing. Yeah. Oh, Barracuda, really? I was just so it's about time as the same structure as Barracuda. Did not know that. Have to so kind of play those back to back. So to does back more than too. meets the eye by Johnny's friend Alex Golding. Oh, hang on. From, 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 <laughs> and Testament, the song oh, "More Than Testament. Meets the Eye." That's got a Barracuda thing too. Yeah. This guy. Hi, this is Alex Skolnick, and you're watching Johnny Bean TV. I believe him. Thank you, Alex Skolnick. I just saw him at the, the Nam show. Huh? He liked cool. my uh, he liked my post on Twitter the other day. Awesome on X. Oh, yeah. cool. Well, whatever. X is awesome, huh? I got we weird people following me. <laughs> we finally got Ron onto X. Yes, uh, Lewis. the The Van Halen three song that has Eddie wearing a goofy hat is <laughs> uh, 
the uh, first, the real only video that anybody really saw on MTV was without you, which you can see the little thumbnail there. He's wearing a, a kind of a jester's hat, right? Yeah. And a, and everybody's in a goofy, weird costume in that one. I think Alex is in like a very late nineties orange, like high vis. Yeah. Polyester vest, puffy vest kind of thing. Yeah, but see, even Eddie's hat, that even goes back to that whole circus, circus thing. type of theme that this album was was uh, had. But that video was interesting in that it was all about the Arctic, and they shot half of the stuff, not, not where the band was, but I think where the model was, mm-hmm. in that ice castle in, like, Norway or something like that that's only open six months out of the year. Let's see if we can find Do you that. remember that? I was without you. And then the rest was the band on a set in Hollywood somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> looking like... Um, and again, they did some of that uh, cool um, 360 view, kind of like you were talking about. They did in Fire in the Hole and in um, the Runaround video. But it was a really cool, weird stop motion effect where all the other bandmates were frozen mm-hmm. like this. Mm-hmm. Except for Eddie during his solo. He's dancing around playing looking at the camera and everybody else is moving past the camera in this weird staccato animation but they're frozen even gary has his like foot in the air and he's frozen it's a really cool video you should check it out it's called without you yeah yeah well see even i mean for then for then that was like new technology right that was kind of the, the precursor to the bullet time stuff that they did for the matrix well that's what Using i was a gonna bunch say of different cameras Ma- the matrix yeah that's kind of where came out the following stuff, year a lot of the stuff came from right yeah i think all this stuff is out in norway or something like that or sweden where it's yeah and then this is all on a stage yeah it's so blurry <laughs> oh it's again we need a we need a film transfer this was all shot on film every every shot here is blurry yeah look at that orange vest thing he's wearing it's very like 60s sci-fi or something gary's got a hoodie on a a fleece hoodie but i did love eddie's throne did you notice he's on a throne in this video he's wearing wool boxy boxer shorts outside of his sweatpants but he's sitting on a throne and of ice and i thought that was pretty pardon the expression cool yeah devo it wasn't quite the Devo hat. It's like a life vest, right? Why are you wearing that ice preserver? And this part of the song, when he <laughs> plays this solo. Oh, yeah, Fender Telecaster bass in the video. Do? You think you of the United States Navy? <laughs> um, yeah. That guitar solo scene, I don't know if you can play it with the sound off. Probably not, but nah. um, that's the moment I'm talking the about. The camera right? scene, yeah. It, they shot it with a bunch of different cameras in um, in a succession in a semicircle. And then Eddie was the only one allowed to move. And so it looks like everything's frozen in time except Eddie. And it's actually a really cool uh, effect. I love this video. It The song is maybe the best all-around song on the album, just as a rocker. There he is. Yeah. Oh, I love his ice throne. I think that's really, that's very Eddie in that cool skull. I miss the 90s music videos, man. The directors had a vision for stuff that almost had nothing to do with the band. There's nothing very Van Halen about this skull with the antlers in the back. But Well, but it's it, they're from the, the cold country. So Hey, that's true. That was the Amsterdam video, which unfortunately was all about weed, but... <laughs> That was them going home. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just I just missed these 90s videos. They had such cool um, concepts to them. And these this is a real place getting, you can go visit. These shots we're getting, man. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> this is a real place you can go, though, and spend a night in a ice hotel in the winter. Where they time. shot this, you mean? or, or in Where Norway? they shot the part with the model. The, the band is, I swear, is just in Hollywood in a studio that's lit to look like an ice place. Mm-hmm. But it's really not all that cold. She, I believe, was in a real was in that real ice castle. Hey, look, she's busting Michael's Kramer base. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh! 
So everybody go watch this. We can't play it on the stream, but it's it's worth a watch. And um, do you remember in the live video how they ended this song live in live in concert? Yep. They did a little nod to a different band. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that is? Tell us all about it, Johnny. They they ended the song with uh, with the tribute to uh, the Beatles. That's right, because the line in the song that keeps refraining is "work it out." Uh, is about there must uh, be some kind of way that we can work it out. Is in the work it chorus. out, and then at the end they keep saying "work it out." We can work it out, something like that. That's all the and song they, they fades saying, out. Number nine, number nine. Which they never worked. They never worked it out with this band. But um, then it would cut to an all uh, uh, acapella of the, the boys in front. I don't think Alex was singing, but they would all sing, life is very short and mm -hmm. there's no time. And the lights would go out. Mm -hmm. Which was like, and oh, that's Eddie's cool. actually playing those chords too, which is super cool. I mean, you could totally see oh, is their, their Beatles influence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I if, just like that it, it was for lyrically... the Beatles, there wouldn't be a Van Halen. Oh, I mean, if there wasn't Definitely. Beatles... Rock and roll might not have there would been be a added. thing. Um, oh, by the way, I may I may uh, throw in that book I was telling you about in a little bit here. Um, I want to show off a book that my friend wrote uh, about the beginnings of rock and roll. If anyone's interested, oh but sure, I'll get yeah, to that in a minute. Um, anyway, that's the album all the way to how many say I, which is just Eddie on piano and singing vocals. And I just, yeah, I feel like I'm sitting there watching him hunch over the keyboard of his piano, singing into a microphone because he's singing at a low register, right? And it's gritty. Again, what he said in interviews, there's so, he, I mean, if, if you guys, you guys need to get the interviews that Eddie gave during this period because he explains everything. He explains yeah, song by in song in detail what he was thinking when he wrote this, when he did that. I'll be right back. So, so a lot of you guys, if, if you're like, yeah, I don't know, you can really get a sense of, of what he was thinking at the time with these interviews that he did, especially at the Guitar World. Uh, 90, what was it? Something 98. I bought it when I came back out here. I came back from Desmond's. We came out here for, for like a little bit, and then I went back. I forget what it is. Something. Janice, what, what's, what's the issue? Guitar World, something 98. Eddie's on the it's, front. It's not far after the release of the album. The, the album was March 17th, 1998. And it could have been April or May. It, it was very- Might have been quickly. April. I'm, I'm thinking I was out here during the summer when that came out. Oh, well, maybe. Well, so I remember being in school. Like I said, my girlfriend at the time, because I graduated that year, but we were still in school taking a photo class and she was like, we should do this as part of the photo thing. We'll have you wear the Van Halen shirt and the hat. And I don't mm -hmm. think it ever came to fruition, but that was while we were still in school. So it would have been before June, before April, May, somewhere. June, somewhere in there. I think it was May. Yeah, I think probably. it was March or May. I think March, March or May. Because it was like, hey, their oh, new album. Might have been January. Might have been January. It wasn't before the album came out. It might have been before the album came out, actually. Dude, That'd I, be crazy. It could have been. I can't but... remember. <laughs> Somebody find out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, everybody give the album a second chance, except Ron. He's had enough. But <laughs> Ron, let's do it again. Yeah, one more spin. I'll just do it twice in a row. Yeah, that's a lot of work. But those are, I mean, I would put Without You, From Afar, Year to the Day. Those are maybe my top three on this one. And Once is definitely interesting to listen to because it is the least, I think, the least Van Halen sounding song on the album. It is such mm -hmm. a weird, almost 80s vibe of to the synth. And um, it just feels like a different band entirely. And and a lot of people hate that. But as mm -hmm. I think Johnny probably feels, and I, I kind of have a bit, bit of this myself, that's kind of interesting. It's super interesting to dive into that and go, wow, this is this is how far this band can stretch when they want to. Oh, I mean, this, I mean... Not that, that they would have gone, they would have kept going that direction because obviously, I guess they had recorded stuff after that that went was back to like kind of what but it could have gone before. a million different directions. Yeah, they could have gone so many different directions. Um, see, Jimmy Z loves that song, 
There you but it, go. I think it was one of the most polarizing ones on the on the album. There you go. And then, aside from the record, there was a song that was taken off the record, off the album, was replaced eventually. Willie. But then, thank you to the internet, we yeah. were able. The song leaked, and we were, and it was a really song. low quality, as I recall. So Ron hasn't heard it yet. Um, <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it to you, Ron. Okay. Actually, it wasn't so bad. It was, I just remember so going, bad. oh, I'd love to hear a high quality version of this song, but it I, I just had like a recording of a recording of a recording or something like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe you yeah. heard a better version than I did. I don't know. I think I did. I think I, I was able to get like a like a higher quality version back in the day. Um, maybe it, it was a song called That's Why I Love You. And from what I think. I think the music the music to the to the track was the demo that Van Halen sent to people to sing over. Oh, like Mitch Malloy. Like Mitch Malloy. And I and think didn't he do different lyrics to that one? He did. There's a Mitch Malloy song out there called uh It's the Right Time. Which is the same it's it's not it's I don't think it's the exact same music as the one that came out with, with Gary. Hmm. But it's the same. It's it's you know it's the same structure. Guitar, bass, drums. You'll notice on Gary's on, on the Gary on Mitch's recording, which he commercially released, it's out there. There's no guitar. Oh, he did. Song. Yeah. So he got to actually use it like on an album, or is he just saying I, this is what I did with Van Halen? He, I think he released it on iTunes. I think. Oh, interesting. But what happened? Really, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the story, story real quickly. Okay, the way Mitch got involved in this is Desmond Child was was writing with Edward, and Desmond showed Edward one of Mitch's music videos. I forget what song it is. This is before. This is in ninety ninety six, late ninety, early ninety, somewhere ninety seven, somewhere before Gary got involved. Mm -hmm. And Desmond told me a lot of this because I was at Desmond's house. And and I was recording, you know, stuff in this band, and and Desmond would tell me stories about working with Eddie. He, he would tell me to get me fired up, you know, to, to record. So I'm like, cool, you know. Well, what um, did he do with Eddie though? They wrote songs. Okay, did he ever get credited for anything? I don't remember. Mm -mm. Ah, so it's a but secret. that's where I think this song comes in. Ah, because I think. This is a song that, that Desmond had worked on with them, I think. Um, I should have asked Desmond this the last time I saw him. Next time I talk to him at some point. I, I just think if they had gone with Mitch, it would have been criticized as Sammy Hagar Jr. <clears throat> the guy had Sammy's hair. <laughs> he still does. Yeah, he's got, he's, well, Sammy doesn't have Sammy's hair anymore, but Mitch does. <laughs> <laughs> That's where so, at. Yeah, he took it. So anyway, so I think the "That's Why I Love You" track, I think that's a le that's left over from working with Desmond Child. I think, but because I remember Desmond telling me that he wrote a song with Edward called "Blood from a Stone" or "Blood from." It was either called "Blood from a Rock" or "Blood from a Stone." Stone I think, sounds better. I think yeah. that <laughs> yeah. I think that was that song, huh? Musically. Okay. So anyway, I think the Van Halen sent that out to people. Like they sent it to Gary. Gary sang over it, sent it back, and I guess it wasn't very good. So, but Gary comes out and moves in with them, and in and the pool is, house, right? He lived doing in the, the pool band. house the whole time they were recording. This. They have a guest. There was a guest house guest on house, the property. Yeah. On the property. But I remember so, Eddie saying, "Yeah, he lived in my pool house." <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Gary guest house. is what he says. Yeah, they call they call him. So wait, they anyway, called him what? I, Uncle Gary. Uncle Gary living on the... That's yeah. what he told Wolfie. Hey, this is Uncle Gary, because he's living, living there. <laughs> so, but see, what I think, I think that was a song that Desmond had worked on with them. I think. That'd be cool but, to find out which ones he worked on besides that. But uh, anyway, and then there's, there's, other, there's other stuff in there. But anyway, that song leaks online, and we hear that, and it's like, man, this is good. How come yeah. this wasn't on the album? Right. You know, I, and that song actually kind of throws back to like more top straight of the ahead. World. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, the song yeah, Top yeah. of the World off Carl Knowledge. You actually hear some of that in this, like the same part during the guitar solo or whatever, like the same thing. So anyway, 
that came out. We heard that. So like, man, this is great. And then, unfortunately, right after that, it's well. Done. Just so you know, when you search, at least on Apple Music, Mitch Malloy, it's the right time. Look what band comes up top. Van Halen. There you go. That's weird. <laughs> it's not on their, you know, list of songs, but <laughs> Mitch Malloy's no. right underneath it. It wasn't officially, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's a shame because I, I, I do hear rumblings about Alex potentially, Alex and Wolfgang potentially going into the vault. And I think they have to do some physical stuff to the, a lot of those tapes to unwarp them. They have to put them, they have to cook them. They have to cook they them in an oven, a kiln of some sort, yeah. and then restretch them, respool them or whatever so that they play back the same way they're supposed to play back. And it's so not that's only a that. Whole process. It's not only that. Uh, they had a, a computer that 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 archived all this stuff and you know when a computer crashes you get all sorts of files yeah. back and it's just numbers and letters and just weird right stuff. it's corrupted i think it's corrupted so i think there's a lot of there's a so lot they'd of have work. to re yeah they don't know what's labeled as what and you know maybe they labeled it r436 whatever and you don't know what's on that but the computer knew what that meant mm -hmm. and this was before they could store that stuff on the cloud edward actually said some of this at one point. Yeah, I think I'd heard some in of that. In an interview, yeah. So he was saying that's why he did not diving into it. But with him gone and Wolfie basically running that studio, maybe someday. So it'd be, we can only kind of keep our fingers crossed, but I keep hearing rumblings about that. That that would be amazing. I mean, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? The album's worth checking out. There's three videos you can check out. There's a live uh, in Sydney, Australia you know, video, if you guys yeah. are not that familiar There's with it. There's a lot it, of live stuff. If you're open yeah. to, yeah, and I want to see that Concord video you were talking about. <laughs> um, but if, you, if you're open to kind of exploring the weird, different experimental side, and that and that was really Eddie being let off the chain, unchained, if you will, um, to do whatever he wanted. And I think even not having, because I think, I do believe philosophically in, in uh, you want to get the best out of an artist put boundaries around them and watch what they do. And I don't just mean musically. I mean, artistically in any, that's sense. where a producer comes in. That's right. And well, and I, I was going to say this three hours ago. One of you had said <laughs> something about Ted Templeman. Imagine Ted Templeman coming in and working with them on this. Imagine the crap out of these guys. What it would have been amazing though. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just really quickly say that I'm reading a book about the competition between Leo Fender who built the first, like, kind of helped invent the electric guitar, and Les Paul, who, through his playing and his popularity, got the Gibson Les Paul to be the, the next big thing in electric. And this is a book a friend of mine wrote. It's called The Birth of Loud. Oh, cool. Um, it is uh, about Leo Fender, Les Paul, and the guitar pioneering rivalry that shaped rock and roll. I'm only a few chapters into it right now. I've had it on my bookshelf forever. But... I used to babysit this kid who wrote Leo this. Fender. <laughs> yeah. No, not that one. Down here, further down. Oh, Les. Oh. <laughs> My buddy Ian. Uh, I was only a few years older than him, but when I was like thirteen or fourteen, I babysat him, and we would listen to uh, Queen's <laughs> greatest hits all day. That was the double CD, you know. Um, uh -huh. We would be blasting that. Well, he went on to work for. Uh, he was the music critic at. Um, uh, what was the San Francisco mag? Uh, yeah, San Francisco Weekly. Uh, he's written for SF Rolling Weekly, Stone, New York Times. Yeah, and Dude, uh, other I'm in there, man. Oh, are you? Yeah, look, pull it up. But anyway, We're... Ian is a music uh, encyclopedia and nice. wrote a hell of a book about. And it's a real page turner, man. I thought it would be like a history lesson, and I'd be like, "In this date, this thing happened," and that. No, man, he gets into these kind of like and... the past three hours on here. <laughs> Yes. This song uh, is called Minutes Log. <laughs> Go buy this book. It's really actually very good. Uh, it's a page turner, and it's got me listening to a lot of stuff <laughs> I'd never listened to before. Thanks for letting me throw that in there. He's a good guy, that Ian Port kid. Dude, let's 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 interview him, man. That'd be actually pretty cool. That'd huh? be great. Yeah, I don't okay. know that he plays anything, but he knows music like you wouldn't believe. And if you follow him on Twitter, he'll he'll out music nerd anybody. He, I don't right know. Now. What's his handle? 
You know, I think it's the Ian Porter, something like that. I, I'd have to look it up. Let me see if I can find him. But he's talking about bands so intricately that I've never even heard of. The Ian like, Porter Six? No, that's Minnesota. Not Porter. Port. Oh. P-O-R-T. What? Are you are you following him on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? <laughs> I'm no. I'm on something called oh. X now. Oh, X. <laughs> Maybe he's Ian S. Port. Oh. Let's see. Ian Port. Mm. Anyway, he had a very interesting story about the first guitars. What you know, they were made because of steel. What do they call steel uh, lap guitars? Um, lap steels. Yeah, and that they that's were what you hear on Van Halen three. Lap steels. All that slide stuff. Oh, really? He did that on a. Eddie flat brought surface all that guitar. stuff out, man. Yeah, so many different things. And he, one. there's a video of him with Leo, with uh, Les Paul, right? Giving him a hug and a kiss on the forehead and yeah. all that going. This is the guy that brought yep. multi-track recording into the, the business. Yeah. And thank God. And he's worshiping him. Yeah. Yeah. So check out that book, guys. Yeah. Before we hang up tonight, let me, uh, mm-hmm. let me, yeah. Make sure I get, I get his info. Yeah. Definitely, man. Here it is. Uh, it's, it's literally iPort at iPort. I don't know if this will focus, but oh, he went away. It went away. Um, iPort. I S like an iPod. Nope. iPort. I got iPort. Yeah, it says ENS port on the top, but it's iPort. Got him. And you'll following. see that I'm following him. Following. There you go. Following. You see, there's the cover of his book as his background there. I got him on that Queen double CD. I love the song One Vision. Yeah, man, that was from the movie Iron Eagle Two. Remember that one? Yeah, makes me want to fly around in a F fourteen Tomcat or something like that. Which dude, Ian and I went and saw. <laughs> remember, remember the air shows you could go to at Moffett Field. Do you remember uh, that? I don't, know if, I don't even know if they do them anymore. But we used to go to those when we were kids together in Alameda. No, at, at in. Um, Mountain View, Palo Alto area, oh. San Jose area at Moffett Field. Mm-mm. They would do the Blue Angels and the F-14s oh, yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, in the late I'm 80s, fleet. he and I went to a couple of those. Oh, dude. Yeah, and you've we been out here longer than I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Born I remember the, the Blue Angels would, would fly around the Golden Gate, fly around the whole bay. That's Fleet Week. They do that during Fleet during Week. During Fleet this Week. Was a, yeah, yeah, I don't know if this was during Fleet Week, but they would do a whole air show, and they you could go and look at all the jets, talk to the pilots, and they would do – you know, demonstration flights over, over oh the head of us out on the airfield. But yeah, one vision. That's a great, uh, we, yeah, we were like getting into rock and roll. We, I was, he was ten, nine or 10 and I was 13, I think in junior high, just getting into rock and roll, just finding my voice. But that one, he had that. When I was CD 13. I was in sixth grade. <laughs> I'm like, I moved on to junior high. <laughs> well, kids these days are in junior high in sixth grade. So it's, it's all I'm in still there. in junior high. Yeah, you were already into Van Halen, and it was all over my head. The only thing I knew Van Halen was from at that time was from that Crystal Pepsi commercial. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Still makes me want a Crystal Pepsi when I hear that. Ah, oh, that stuff was weird. <laughs> Drinking something that looked like exactly a Sprite that tasted like a Coke? I think it tasted exactly like regular Pepsi. They just took the caramelization out of it, the caramel color out of it. <laughs> right, Ron? Yes. <laughs> All right, we should probably go. I, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that stuff. I'm gonna go listen to this album now that we've talked about it. All Let's even though let, it was the weirdest, least Van Halen Van Halen record. It was still something to to boggle the mind. Still Van Halen, and it's unfortunate that we didn't get any, any more uh, of that with Gary. Gary but um, again, you guys, if you haven't heard it. Check it out, but listen to it differently. Don't go into it thinking, oh, it's it's running with like, the devil. It's like I did. Like Ron did. <laughs> Don't do what Ron does, everybody. Yeah. Do what I say. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, listen to it a couple times. You know? Yeah, really and, and but, I know um, I did have to listen to it a few times to get to know it for sure. And well, I will tell people to make sure when they listen to it they know what song's what instead of just a timestamp. Yeah, the whole the whole album was one thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, 
Let's let's do a quick uh, giveaway, you guys. I had said I would there give away go. one of those Steve Rosen guitar picks because I have them somewhere. I, I I I put away. Do I get a better chance for being on it? If I just got to punch in numbers, right? Yeah. Nah. Well, next time I see you, I'll I'll just give you one. <laughs> you just sneak me one anyway. <laughs> Here, let's let's do. What's your... my payment for being on his show? Yeah, let's just do. Uh, Zach Thong, what up? Two thousand. Zach. Zach. Zach didn't get the pick. Zach always gives me a friendly uh, devil horns in uh, Twitch chat. Are those friendly? MPN. <laughs> yeah. MPN, MPN didn't get the pick. He's supposed to get. Uh, all right, you guys. The giveaway has started. Enter a number between zero and two thousand. Nineteen eighty-three. Right now. I'll read off all the numbers like a, a like we're at a bingo night. Okay. I need to find <laughs> them. I don't know where they went. There, I, I have a guitar pick holder that usually the... sits here, but I cleaned my desk. Oh, don't <laughs> never do that. You'll you'll won't know where anything is. I had to because my computer. I had to clean my computer because the computer. Oh five. We're going with a start. three. Is it a three or four digit number, Tom? Johnny, I don't know why. I it's four it digits. Tom. Here's four okay. Digits. I'll, okay, because we because we got to get we'll, out of here. We'll it's pin. four digits. Two of the number. Two of the numbers are the same both times. Two of the numbers are the same both times. So there's four numbers. And let's say like this one and this one are the same and this one and this one are There's the same. There's two pairs of the same There's number. There's two pairs of numbers. Two double numbers. Like double one, numbers. one, two, two. But I don't think two, 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 because that would be... No. <laughs> you could have said they're all the same number. 21, 12. But yes. they're next to each other. No? No, you they're not. Say, well, oh, two of them so are next to each other. Oh, all, okay. All 21, four are actually next to each other, but you know. 51, 50. No, that's not quite right. 51, 51. Hopefully uh, I, can, I can find the... Uh, Hopefully I can find... Let me look real quick, actually. Yeah, I go find I those. Them. I'm going to call out the relevant numbers. 800 is not a winning number. We need it to be four digits. It's made up of only two numbers, folks. So use the same number twice, two times. Does that make sense? 2233, 1199. 2244, two, four, things like that. But they're not going to be next to each other. Two of them are 20, next to each other. 2112. The others are separate. So that must be X, Z, Z, X of some sort, 30, right? 33, 44. I think 2112 is a better, better sample of that. 2442, 1221. <laughs> 1220 uh, will not be it. 1331 could have been it. Nobody 11, won 12, that one. Well, we know it's not zero, or it's not 999 down, and it's not 2000. I can give you guys a, a, a clue that where you guys would totally... Somehow. What do the numbers add up to? <laughs> the four uh, digits. What do they seven. add up to? <laughs> do I don't give a false answer. That'll confuse everyone. I they add know. up to three. I don't think you can do... Well, no. Couldn't add up to seven either. All right. I found it. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. This is well, what you get if you win. Oh, that's Eddie. Never mind. Steve Rosen, Tone Chaser book Tone guitar Chaser. pick. This is what you get if you win. It's not the kind of pick you play your guitar with. It's the kind you put on display because it's so pretty. Yeah. 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 Photographs. Photograph. Photo photographs by. Oh wait, somebody just won. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey God. Where's the stuff? Oh my gosh. Anyway, photographs by Niels Lozauer. Oh, this guy right here. Hey folks, Niels Lozauer here. Check out my good friend Johnny Bean TV. Awesome. Thank you so much. But let me do one more. Where is it? We're a good Facebook friend. Okay. Wait, where is it though? The Johnny Bean TV. It's YouTube, Facebook, okay. uh, Twitter, it's okay, let's do one more. Twitch too. Hey folks, Niels Lozauer here. Check out Johnny Bean TV on Facebook. And YouTube, you'll enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Where was that? Right now, on. Now. That, that was now a, that Peggy was a, win. That was that was at a book uh, a bookshop in Hollywood. This book? A year ago. This book. No, no, uh, that the the Tone Chaser. Oh, it was for Tone Chaser. Steve Rosen, but that's oh, that's a it. Hour book you have right there. Yeah. Yep. It's a beautiful Actually, coffee the, table book. The guy that put that book together was there at that thing. We were talking. Of course. 
actually. Got to keep those guys together. So who won? Oh, Jimmy Z won. Jimmy Z? Jimmy Z. Where does it say? Are you, are you I won a quite a few numbers? times last year. So Zach, what was but... the number? Well, let me make sure. So oh, one one two two Boogie Woogie Avenue. Okay, the 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 um, the hint that I would have given I, you, I, oh, if, yeah. if we had to, was what For year was Carnal Knowledge. Knowledge released? Oh, I would have gotten that instantly. Nineteen ninety one was the winning number, and that's the year Carnal Knowledge. Was so there you go. Okay. Congrats, you Jimmy. Where is he? You're Thanks, late guys. Bed? I'm late to bed, but it was well <laughs> worth it. Oh, you didn't say well. It was worth it. LOL. Okay. Jimmy. Congrats, send, Jimmy Z. Send me a text. 415-952-3263. Okay. You got to text me. You got to text me now Just before you go here. to bed. See text number, me guys? now your name, where you want me to send it, and what you want. All in one text message, please. And I will send this off first thing tomorrow. And I think I have another one here, which I will give to you, Mike, next time I see you. Um, I think I have one. Yeah, I I'll saw take another you. one. I saw I saw one here. Hey, remember when my mom won a pick like two years ago? Yeah, I didn't. Need, I never got that one. Uh oh. <laughs> OK, well, I'll give you that one, too. I was on her account. I was on three different accounts. It was great. That's how you win, folks. Yeah. What did you, did you, you want a, a Cabo Wabo or something? Sure. Right? Your mom did. <laughs> your mama did. Your mom, your mom. <laughs> your mom. Well, what, what do you want? Did, what does your mom want? A Cabo Wabo? You showed a guitar on there earlier that I'd like. Huh? Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'll that's take whatever's the coolest looking, uh, Van Halen connected pick you got. Uh, uh, do you want a bumblebee? Heck yeah, a bumblebee pick. Ooh, no, look at that. The, he means the guitar. <laughs> yeah, give me the guitar. There you go. That's okay. kind of like uh, looks a little like that, but you know, different. There you go. I don't have any of those. Okay, well, you, you got that one. All right, you guys. Mike, great to see you, man. Thanks for having me, guys. You're welcome, man. Anytime. Uh-oh, don't say that. Anytime. Oh, wait, B9. Dude, was this you? I forgot. I, I got uh, guitar picks in the mail. B9, what's your real initials? <laughs> B9. <laughs> somebody somebody sent me. A robot. Is this you? I'm going to open this real quick. Here. So the nine is the what letter in the alphabet. Uh, Jay, everybody's going like it. Yeah, it is. It's Jay. We can't we can't say things like that on the internet. <laughs> Hang on, Peggy. You have two of them. What of that? The Bumblebee picks? No, the Eddie pick. Oh, the Slow's Hour or the um, Tone Chaser ones? Yep. Peggy got two of everything. Johnny gives away. She wins it. Oh, nice. Most times. Smell the glove. B9, did you send me these? Who sent me? B9 asked if you got the pick he sent you. Is this you, B9? I just got these in the mail today. Wait, he's saying goodnight. Wait, don't leave. Are you the one that sent me these? JM. Yeah. Hendrix. They're Hendrix guitar picks. Experience Hendrix. Dang it. It's blurry, but anyway, they're, that they're, the cool. They're Hendrix. Very cool. I heard he's good. Well, that's there he a is. very young Hendrix. A lot of people don't realize he was uh, in the Airborne. Yeah, military guy, and he played for the what the Monkees or something. Well, he opened, he opened. for him and got got booed off the stage. Isn't that crazy? And do you know who played bass with Jimi Hendrix one time? One time? Mm hmm Only one time. This guy. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I know him as more of a guitar player. I didn't know that. 
Here we are. Was that was that in um, the recent show? Hendrix. You saw that in Monterey as well. Monterey. This was right outside the, the venue. Right. See, we walked, we hung out downstairs, and then we walked, we walked through that gate. We walked out, and then, and then I, I took. Some he looks like you surprised him with that photo. Like he didn't know that was about to be taken. <laughs> no, I told him. I told him. I said, "Hey, I said, hey, can I take a selfie?" And he, he like fixed his hair. I'll show. Oh you. yeah, you it's, can tell. it's a father and son photo. Is what it is. Here's it's the adorable, actual. When was that He's show? Living in San Francisco, August thirtieth. That was in August? Yep. 30th? Yep. Right, so Wolfie was like... Wait, no, Wolfgang was August 30th. Okay. Because I, I just saw it on my phone. And then I went to TwitchCon. Oh, that's right. That was that was crazy. Got some more promo videos there, didn't you? That was crazy. And then... You met Mickey? Who's Mickey? Huh? James says he met Mickey. Oh, Mickey and Jimmy's Gillette? speech is next to you. James, you talking about Mickey Dolez? Oh, of the monkeys? Yeah. Yep. Yep, there you go. There's a few monkeys hits that I think rocked I, and needed I to be. Him. I never got I to see them. I saw them here in Ohio. I watched, you know, I'm a little bit younger. It's a little before my time, but I watched them on Nick at Night. I watched that the, oh, yeah. the show they did, and I loved it. That's how I See, got here's into the, here's the here's right here. This is the loop of the photo. This is funny. Yeah, yeah. He's like fixing his hair. He's, <laughs> he's just fixing his hair. See. And then there the eyebrows go. go way up. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for his glamour shot. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Is that the same thing? Yeah, that's the, that's the shot right there. That's great. The <laughs> <laughs> that's does seem cool. Dude. That, uh, that was, Maggie, that if you grew so up watching fun. the monkeys, you know they didn't spell it with a Y. Come on now. Wow. And they shaped right. the word in the form of a guitar. Whoa. All right. Jimmy, I just got your, your message, I think. Hey, Jimmy Z. No worries. Ambush musicians. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Right, I got your info, man. I'll send that out first thing tomorrow. All right, you guys, we're out of here. Don't hang up. Bye, Mike. everybody. You're good, everybody. We'll say goodbye good. off the air. You guys, we'll see you technically. I might see you guys tomorrow on Laz's show in Alabama for yeah. for music therapy Wednesdays. Thursday, might see some cool stuff. Friday, we'll be back, Ron and I, with talking guitars. And I do have some footage from some guitar shops I filmed a week ago that I haven't showed you guys yet because we did Ooh. no shows Friday and Saturday, sort of. I mean, I, I did a week. I might, I might video, run up but... to my aunt's store and video some of the remote where I sent you the pictures, all those. Oh, okay, cool. Fan- yeah. They're oh, actually, that'd be awesome. They're actually <laughs> remodeling it. It's, it's, when you walk in it now, it looks like a guitar center. Oh, cool. <laughs> you know how I like guitar centers. I know. There's one near me. You should come check it out. Yeah. Well, it's I know that. Three thousand miles for me, but okay. Well, <laughs> you too, Ron. You can come too. All I'm right. Jumping, jumping. I'll buy you some jet. picks. Yeah. <laughs> Channel members, thank you again for your continued support for this show. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, Lisa, thank hey, you look, so I much. See my name on there. Is your name on there? Yeah, in the middle. It should be on there. Under Michael Smith. Mike Wood. There, there you are. Know. There you are. Lisa, thank you again for your support tonight. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Good, if he says bye. Peace out. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. And then I'll give you mine, so come back around this way. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Mike. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm Johnny Bean. I met you last year. Thank I talked on Google+. Oh. Yes. Thank you, I remember you. Yeah. I look like, All right. Uh, let's go. Like One, two, three. Let's yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that a Google+, Google+ Hangout? I'm Johnny Bean. 